You're on the edge of the Grand Canyon, right? You're looking down at this giant hole. And what I'm going to ask you to do is take a leap of faith and to trust me. All right? And logically think through that. It makes sense. You know? But you can jump off that Grand Canyon and I'm going to hand you a parachute so you land safely on the ground. But you got to take that leap of faith to start. And you got to trust me. And if you've ever trusted anyone in your life, today's the day. Because there's no one else that can help you in this deal. Welcome to ADMC Investigations. If you're a fan of consistent videos, check out our uploads. I'm sure you'll find something you've never seen before. And we're always adding to the library. So make sure you're subscribed. The absolute best way to support the channel is to subscribe. And the only violence that I condone is you assaulting that like button if you want to see more. We are going to be putting a ton of extra content on Patreon, so if you like all the extra information surrounding these kinds of cases, consider becoming a patron. Okay, enough rambling, let's get into it. This case brings us to Rowlett, Texas, November of 2015. The seemingly perfect couple, Laura Grillo and Ionis, aka John McCreese, were preparing to tie the knot. They were due to be married in just over a week. Well, this would never happen. Laura, a mother of three, would be found deceased on her kitchen floor with one 45 caliber bullet casing next to her. Now, of course, during a homicide investigation, detectives try to rule out those closest to the victim, and Ionis actually arrived on the scene shortly after the police. John, here, here's, here's what I need, okay? For us to find out, find out everything that's going on, okay? We're going to, all right? Listen to me. I need you to tell me that it's okay for us to go in the house sure. and search and find out everything, okay? Now, somebody will probably be back over here in a second with some paperwork. It's a, it's just you saying, hey, you guys are authorized to go in the house. Can I? You know Laura, right? Yeah. Can you go and verify that, sir? I, I can't right now, okay? Just to wait. And, and John, I'm not I'm not doing it to be an ass I know, or anything I know, else. I know, just... I'm telling you right now, I can't do it, okay? So let me let me figure out some more of what's going on, okay? And we're gonna let you know exactly. I'll, I'll let you know everything it, it, when I find out, okay? Fair enough. Okay. And police initially thought it was very odd the lack of emotion shown from Macrice, but as the investigation continued, they lacked the evidence to charge anyone for the murder of Laura Grillo. Well, that would all change in late December of 2015 as detectives started to peel back the layers. After obtaining warrants for the phone records of Macrice's two employees, Jesus Trevino and James Vieda, they learned that on the morning of the murder, while Macrice was heading into Dallas, James and Jesus were heading into Rowlett together. Stay tuned to the end for the conclusion of this case. This interrogation was conducted by Texas Ranger Holland on June 2nd, 2016. And let's just say he doesn't really mess around. Okay, here's the interrogation of James Vieda. But first, let us have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. Hey, James. Jim Hall with the Rangers. How you doing? Yes, sir. You doing all right? What's up, yeah. Sam? Sam, how's life treating you today? Good day in paradise, eh? Nothing like paradise. Hey, man, um, I wanted to talk to you for a little bit today. It's kind of a different conversation because I really don't have any questions for you or anything. I just want to explain some things to you, okay. if, if that's cool with you. But you're in jail. Uh -huh. Right? You're in custody, you have rights. So in order to open up dialogue, I'm going to read you Miranda, okay? And then from there, you kind of steer the boat. If You've been arrested before, you know how that goes. But if for any reason you don't want to talk to me or you want to go drink water or go to the bathroom or do whatever, all you got to do is say. I mean, you steer the boat and, and you're in charge of things. But I want to tell you some stuff just because I think you, you probably really want to know about this stuff. Uh, and kind of looking at you when you come in, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you really want to know these things. So um, I'll kind of explain a little bit about who I am and, and what I do, but uh, it's kind of weird, I guess, uh, hearing this from a law enforcement officer, but I'm, I'm somebody who's actually probably here to help you. I'm, I'm not an enemy. I'm a friend, if that makes any sense. But to um, kind of open things up first, let me read this to you. You have the right to remain silent. 
Today is uh, June the 2nd, 2016, and it's 10.23 a.m., and I am J.B. Holland, Texas Rangers. Um, hey, do me a favor. Spell your last name for me. B-I-L-L-E-D-A. B-I-L-L-E-D-A. Okay. And your first name? James. Okay. And what is your date of birth? Okay. Have you ever uh, met a ranger before? Yes. Of course you have. On, on this uh, murder deal, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Well, let me explain what I do and, and who I am because I'm a little bit different than probably anyone that you've uh, ever worked with. And what I do is probably a lot different than... Um, I guess what you've ever known, okay? I'm what they call a USIT ranger, all right? Uh, unsolved crime investigation team. And there's, uh, oh, I guess it's kind of a, a super elite group. There's eight of us throughout the state of Texas. And um, how do you get to be a USIT ranger and, and what do you do? Do you mind if I talk about myself for a minute? Mm -hmm. All right, everyone likes to talk about themselves, right? But uh, you'd, you'd probably rather sit here than being sitting in the cell anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying, I've helped out with this investigation as much as possible. Uh, sure, sure. Well, let me explain um, exactly what I do, and that'll kind of put things in perspective a little bit. So, to be a USIT Ranger, you got to be really, really good at what you do, okay? It's like the epitome. It's the top level. There's eight of us. In total, there's you know only 120 Rangers in the whole state of Texas, so there's not very many. But this USIT group, we're basically attached to the boss. Now, I work anywhere I want. I actually spend a lot of time working out of state, working cases for other state police agencies, for the FBI. Um, and basically, I report to the governor. I've got a, a chief and, and the director of DPS, but it's normally calls from the governor's office that I get. Uh, and there's nothing like getting a phone call on a Sunday morning at about 7 o'clock when the governor's reading the paper. Jim, what's what's this stuff? You need to go look at this, right? That's what I do. I'm, I'm kind of like the, the gopher for the governor, all right? But it's pretty hard to get in my spot because... You know, if you got the governor calling you, you know, it's some pretty important stuff. And you can't say, well, I don't know, you know, and, right. you, and you can't have, have something that's not solved. I mean, the governor's got an issue. The governor's got a problem. And, hey, he's the governor. I'm the Texas Ranger. Man, I got to go take care of business and I got to make my boss happier. I don't stick around. And uh, you, you actually remind me of the, the legend of the Texas Rangers that I heard about. Uh, the old Wild West days. Yeah, yeah. They sent all these marshals and sheriffs in there and it took one Texas. Ranger. One one ranger, right? Okay. Well, and I know that you dealt with some guys, but I'm a little bit different than them because I only do these one things. And honestly, really all I do is homicides. I, I mean, murders. And I don't do regular murders, okay? Uh, primarily, I do like serial murder cases or the governor's uncle, okay, got murdered. And, uh, Six years ago, guess who got that phone call? Jim, my uncle got murdered. I need you right now to go take care of that. I want people in jail. Three o'clock in the morning, I'll drive out to West Texas, work three days straight, and guess what happens? Sound that murder. Yeah. That's right, that's what I do. My uh, conviction rate, my um, solvency rate, 100%. And I've been doing this been with DPS for 23, 24 years, and this uh, USIT role, uh, where all I do is, is these things uh, about the last four or five years. Um, so normally what happens is there's a murder in Dallas. You know what, Dallas PD can go work it. Uh, or, or maybe the Rangers are going to go work it, right? That's, that's their deal. It's just a, a normal murder. They don't call me for stuff like that. They call me for extra special stuff. So why am I talking to you? Why am I sitting here today? Well, because we got a murder that's gone in south for six months, right? And guess who's been calling the governor's office and sending emails? Really? Hmm? Nope. <clears throat> Worse. Victim's mother. So you got the victim's mother who's torn up six months. Police haven't solved this. I mean, come on. It's, you know, it's obviously a murder. It's, it's, it's not a hard deal. Uh, reached out to the papers. The papers get a hold of it. This hasn't been solved. Reached out to the governor. We, you know, these 
Oh, you should read these letters, man. You know how it is. Imagine a mother losing a child. I met her once. Oh, you, uh, Laura or her mom? I met both. Oh, okay, okay. I met Laura twice before what happened to her, and I met the mom once, but it was when we went to go clean up. And Oh, no, no, not John's mom, Laura's mom. Yeah. Oh, you met her. Okay, yes. okay. What'd you think of her? She was sweet. I, I, I tried to comfort her as much as she can. I mean, I, I talked to her a little bit because I just lost my father about four months ago, so, I mean, four years ago, so I know how it is to lose someone close to you. And, there's not really much you can say. Just so God, God takes care of everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a bad deal. Um, but I like to go up one further, and I say one further. But I work for God. I do God's work, right? So sometimes at the end of the day, there's just people that need to be punished. Right. You know, you can't you can't get away with murder. I mean, uh, you got a mother, uh, you know, with with children and. You know, it's a bad deal. And then you got her mom, who's just completely devastated, torn up by this thing. And, uh, you know, I kind of separate myself from the emotion because, man, you can't walk into some, you know, murder scene with bodies all over the place and get emotional. You know, you break down and cry or something like that. You let things affect you and and you lose it and, and you can't do what you need to do. And so I'm a kind of black and white, non-emotional and I don't. That's a bad deal. I feel sorry for mom, but that doesn't affect me. I just got a job to do. You know, right. The governor says, hey, get up there and solve this murder. And uh, since it's been sitting there for about six months, Roger that, 10 and now it's my murder investigation. And uh, it was interesting. Rowlett, um, I think they did a good job, but they didn't solve it. They know who did it, but they never, they didn't make an arrest, right? And, uh, I mean, so my job, I'm like the closure. I thought they, they did. They told me that they had. Who'd they arrest? They said they have um, a suicide arrest or something. That yeah, he's arrested on something else, though. He's not arrested for murder. He's on probation violation or something. So he didn't get arrested for murder, just sitting here on something else. So there's no, there's no arrests. So they asked me to come in, and I did. And uh, the way that I work is, man... <laughs> I mean, I just go at it. I don't sleep. I'm kind of one of those dudes that once I start get a hold of something, you know, like a pit bull, you know how they get a hold of something they won't let go? Boom, that's what I do, and it's all-encompassing. I'm kind of one of those type A personalities, you know, man, I got to solve it, because if not, then I don't sleep. So I just basically stay up for three days and do everything I can to go through every single part of it, look at interviews, look at crime scenes, look at photos, go back, look at evidence, see what they missed, see what they messed up, uh, have things reprocessed. The good thing about working for the governor is if they miss something, right, that needed to be processed, well, they might have to wait three to six months to get stuff done. What's my turnaround? About an hour. Yeah, roughly. Well, two hours around here because of the traffic. I got to drive there. I got to drop it off. Get a cup of coffee along the way, you know. Right. Uh, maybe stop and get something to eat. But yeah, my turnaround's pretty quick. So the neat thing is it's like I'm, I'm like the Superman guy, right? I come in and everyone does everything for me. They, they bend over backwards to get all this stuff done. So there's no excuses. I mean, I can't step out of this thing and, hey, you know, the lab didn't help me or well, that PD didn't give me all their stuff or the rangers that were up there working on things didn't do anything. I have no excuses, so I just got to come up here and, and solve it. So I did. It's done, you know. Uh, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm talking to you today. Uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, today is Thursday, right? So on Tuesday, the facts were presented to a grand jury, all the stuff that I came up with. Because they did a good job, but they missed a couple things, all right? And they missed some forensic things that... Um, They probably shouldn't have missed, okay? Uh, but I also have people that do things like phone analysis and tower dumps and other things that they just they didn't have. Well, at the end of the day, Jesus, what do you think of Jesus? The, uh, the person I knew, and after everything I heard from Arlette, not the same person I remember. Right, right. Well, I mean, you think he's a good person, think he's a bad person? I think he's pretty good. I mean, he was... I always worry about making sure I got my probation taken care of. But I did notice, uh, uh, looking at it over and over again, that he was a friend, but he was kind of distant. I mean, every day after work, I would try to hang out, 
She's like, man, get some shreds, go to sleep. And they're wanting to hang out, so I would find somebody else to hang out with. And I mean, he seemed, he seemed good. I mean, they had plans to do a lot of stuff. And I was like, yeah, I, mean, I thought the job was a blessing when I got it. Yeah. Well, so this happens in November, right? 2015? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, tell me about you in November of 2015. What's going on in your life? You down and, and out on your luck? I mean, I know you're living in a hotel. You got some issues with dope. I mean, what, what's happening with you? Well, dope was given to me. Okay. I, I, I would came out clean on your way. I just had it over there. Uh, me, my mom was bipolar schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. I went through an ordeal trying to get her taken care of. I said, how in her name? She got me evicted out. I talked to APS. I talked to a dad. I was trying to get everything. Couldn't care. Once I'm out of it, I explained to him, I cannot monitor her medication anymore. Mm-hmm. She is Medicaid dependent. Right. She insulin. So they couldn't do anything for me. All right. I told my poor officer I wasn't finding work because I was trying to take care of her. So now since I'm not working, uh, trying to take care of my mom, I got back to work. Right. So I was working at Del Monte. I was making... Not to pay rent, right? You don't have more. Right. So I was hopefully going to move up with them. And um, as I'm going through this, I was going out with a girl who broke up. And then um, I really, you know, I was just bored. And I started thinking about who to talk to. And I hit up with Susan. And he was telling me, oh, I'm working for this guy doing contract and this and that. I'm like, well, shoot, uh, I, I need another job. Why don't you try me out? Right, right. He says, well, uh, well, I was talking to him about it. I was like, well, I'm on Tuesday, so mm-hmm. you can't let me know. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, I went in with him to work. Did a great job. The boss said, come back tomorrow. I'm like, I have a job. Mm-hmm. But if in order for me to come back tomorrow, I have to quit that job. Mm-hmm. So I need an actual job. He was like, all right, that's a bit. I got a job. Right. I started working. And everything started going great. And then all that happened. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you, so you kind of dip back into dope at that time? I mean, you kind of down and out in your luck, or, you know, I know you did a, a rehab stint. Well, yeah, I went to ISF for 10 months. Uh, okay. For right. the substance, for, because I had it. Right, right. So, I mean, it, what, meth, or what were you using? Marijuana. That was it? I, I don't know. I thought you, you weren't doing anything hard. Mm-hmm. Nothing? Okay. All right. And you're, uh... uh let's see. And your criminal history, I mean, okay, you got a hickey on there, but it's not like this girl's, what, a couple years younger. I mean, it's almost legal, right? She was 16. Yeah. So, but, but there's a detective notice and everything. To, there, I could have fought it, but because my mom, I had to take probation. Right. Well, why am I talking to you today, do you think? It, it, is James a bad guy? Um, you don't have a bad criminal history. I mean, kind of messed up by a year, but... You know, it's not like she wasn't, you know, consenting or anything. I mean, it's not like you did anything bad. She was my girlfriend. Yeah, I don't know. Her dad got mad, right? Pretty much. No, no, but I don't know what happened. All I know is all of a sudden that I had a guy called down to DPD to have a conversation with them. They asked me to annoy her. I said, yeah, she's my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, do you know she's 16? I said, wait, what? Because I met her through my hunger. Right. Well, but at the end of the day, I guess what I'm saying is you're not this horrible dude. You're not a rapist. You're not an axe murderer. You're not out there peddling dope to kids or anything like that. You're a pretty good guy. I mean, you got this hickey, but I mean, reading through all the reports and everything seems like more than likely her dad present probably wasn't really happy that she was in a relationship with you, right? Well, her dad was actually not around. It was the mom. Mom, I'm sorry, but she probably wasn't overly excited that you guys are in this relationship and... um, and so you, you end up getting the shaft on it. Now you're kind of paying the price. But you're not a bad person, I guess is what I'm saying. Right. Agreed. Okay. Um, let, me, let me throw some things at you, right? I'm just going to lay some things out to you because I, okay. I want you to know where I'm at. And I'm doing all this for a reason. I'm doing this, believe it or not. And do you trust law enforcement? You know, in my family, that is law enforcement. Really? Who do they work for? Um, my cousin's a constable. One of the close friends of the family was a judge. Um, well, another close friend of the family, he actually was the mayor of Cocker Hill. Okay, okay. Um, so you come from a good family. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, 
um, you know, a lot of times people, especially in, in your position, don't trust the police, and I don't, I don't blame them, okay? I'm, I'm always told by all law enforcement, I'm the most cooperative person that you've ever met. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, all right? I'm not real good at uh, blowing smoke. I just kind of throw stuff out there. And so the stuff that I work with, it's like life and death stuff. I mean, the majority of stuff that I do, it's like death penalty stuff. And uh, have I put a bunch of people on death row? Yeah. And I had someone ask me, you know, one time a close family friend, how do you sleep at night? You know, knowing that you got these these people that are going to death row that are, you know, you go down there, you watch the execution, or, you know, there's all these guys sitting there waiting to die, and it's because of an investigation that you were. Well, number one, I always say, well, I didn't kill anyone, and I didn't make them kill anyone. And number two, what I always tell them is they had a choice. And <laughs> I'm not, are you Catholic? Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you're right, man. Uh, Catholic Christian. My mom's Christian. My dad was Catholic. Uh, okay, okay. So, you, I mean, you probably don't go to church every Sunday or anything, but you're, you're, you're all right. Don't worry about it. Although, you've been in here for a little while. Do I need to step back and worry a little bit? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. We, we, we vote. Since I accept and everything, we always say. Uh, no, I got you. I got you. Um, I kind of got this moral code, I guess. And to me, this job, why am I good at it? Why is it not complicated to me? Well, it's not complicated to me because I don't have to make any choices in it. I just let other people make choices. You know, I, I told you when uh, when I came in, you steer the boat. You make a decision if you want to walk up and leave, if you want to, hey, Ranger, go pound sand. If, hey, that's your deal. It doesn't doesn't matter to me. You know, that you, you make the choices. I'm kind of this guy who's, who's floating down the river and someone else is steering the boat. But I always give people choices. And to me... <clears throat> the choice I wish I had right now is uh, heaters. It's cold. Oh, well, I don't have one of those. Sorry. <laughs> I'll rub up on you or something, but uh, oh. <laughs> you've been in here a little bit. So, no. well... But my thing is choices, and um, I always throw things out to people, and I think it's important to tell people the truth, not to blow smoke, and I usually, I'm different, I just lay out the facts, boom, 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 I don't ask people a bunch of questions, because normally, yeah. Normally when I'm going to ask someone a question, well, almost always, to tell you the truth, I already know the answer. So I tend not to ask a bunch of questions because I'm a good investigator. So I can go through, I mean, forensics and everything nowadays is pretty easy. You know, people aren't that smart. They watch CSI and they think they're smart, but they're really not that smart. Everyone makes mistakes. Okay. Well, I tell my son, when you go to bed at night, you should be able to put your head down. You should be able to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. In other words, you shouldn't be thinking about the things that you did wrong or the bad choices that you made that day or anything like that. You should go to bed with a free conscience, with no worries. And so people ask me, well, how do you sleep? Well, I sleep great because I go home and I put my head down and I have a free conscience and I try to lead a, a good life. Well, how do you sleep with these people on death row? Well, I gave them choices. And the reason that they're there is because they chose to be there. And everything in life, there's options. There's never just one straight path. There's always multiple options. And what I find it best is to explain things to people and then kind of lay out what the options are and then let them make a choice. And then whatever their choice is, I am good with that. You know, and sometimes people make bad choices, and sometimes those bad choices, at the end of the day, cost them their lives because they go to death row, they get executed, or they sit in a 10 by 10 room for the next 12 years and then they get executed. But that's a choice that they made. Other people uh, recognize that they make mistakes. And when someone makes a mistake, what's the difference between a good person and a bad person? No, it's for home, it's right. You know, a lot of people know what's wrong and what's right. A lot of bad people go do bad shit that they know is wrong, but they still do it. Do you think Mother Teresa ever made a mistake? Yeah. Okay. What about the Pope? Right? Part Catholic. Do you think the Pope makes mistakes? Um, that's the hard one. It's the Pope. <laughs> He grew up, he was five at one time, right? You don't think he ever stole a lollipop or did anything like that? 
Huh? You think he's always out there taking care of the poor and the needy? Come on, man. Everyone's in seventh grade. Everyone's in eighth grade. Everyone's five years old. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. They don't know better. Okay. Well, this is the difference between a good person and a bad person. A good person, like Mother Teresa, she makes a mistake, and the Pope makes a mistake, and I make mistakes, and you make mistakes, okay? But good people say that they're sorry for the mistakes that they made. They make amends, and they pray, and they go down the road, Mm -hmm. all right? A bad person, he makes a mistake. He just keeps walking. He never says, I'm sorry. He never feels bad about it. He never prays for forgiveness. He never asks for redemption. None of those things ever happen. <clears throat> he just keeps walking down the road because he's a bad person. <laughs> and Christianity and, and why I talk about this is because it's important to you and, and your future. All right. Uh, what's the number one rule in Christianity? You have to spread the gospel. You have to tell everyone about God and you've got to Bring them into the church. You got to make them aware of it, right? That's number one. Okay. What's number two? You have to forgive because the world is full of sinners and the church is supposed to bring in sinners and they're supposed to help them and pray for them and lead them to a path of redemption and help them to be good Christians, right? That's number two. Well, why is that important? And two is probably the most important thing in your life right now because judges, district attorneys, you're hungry. Juries, grand juries, all these different people are made up of Christians, right? And those are the people who judge us in our society today. And what is the one thing that those people are looking for? They know that the people that appear in front of them did something wrong, they did something bad, right? But what is what do they want to hear? I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm begging for your forgiveness. And what happens to those people? Those people don't end up on death row, okay? They just don't because everyone makes mistakes and it's the job of every Christian to forgive and your district attorney and your district judge and your juries and your grand juries, they're all made up of Christians, right? And it's their nature that have to forgive. And so in doing this job for 23, 24 years, I've seen it. I've seen people who just never say that they made a mistake. They never beg for forgiveness. They never, never ask for forgiveness. They never say that they're sorry. And those are the people that, that end up way down there. Okay, and I'm telling you that because that's important to you as we move forward, because today you will have choices. All right. And that's why I want to kind of lay that out, because you're steering the boat in your life right now. And probably the most important decisions that you're ever going to make in your life, you're going to make today. As a matter of fact, I pretty much promise you that you're going to make those decisions today. All right. But I want to explain what's out there and why I'm saying all these goofy things to you. Are you wondering, you know where I'm going with this? Okay. Oh, really? Your boy, Jesus, you think he's a brain surgeon or you think he's a dumbass? He's a dumbass. He is. So what are you, are you afraid of him? No. I mean, well, tell me about what you know about him. I did. Yeah, what else? Mr. Gangbanger, Mr. What is it, Los Mexicales, Mr. Tough Guy, Hitman, all that other shit? Well, I didn't uh, learn about uh, his, what his tattoo meant on his head until I was an ISF. Uh, yeah. And what's that mean to you? That he, well, well, they told me he was in prison. Yeah. Didn't know that. And uh, they told me, I figured out the tattoo on his head that, that uh, was supposed to be Mexican Mafia or something. Some little yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. And you believe that? You think that's legit? You think he's this big player? Or you think he's a, a stooge? That's not cool. Well, I mean, but what do you think of him? You think he's this legitimate badass? You think he's just kind of a joker? Uh, more of a joker. I'm not sure. But, I mean, it's hard to take what people say sometimes because they boast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They want to seem cool. Are you not afraid of him? No. Is he capable of murder? I didn't think so. Yeah. But considering what Roulette keeps telling me, doesn't sound too good. Yeah, and I'm not worried about what they're telling you. I'm worried about what you know. But I want to throw some things out here. Do you know uh, this lady? No. Okay. So I'm going to show you some pictures. Does that look familiar to you? 
You ever seen your boy with a gun? No. Never? Never in his backpack? Uh-uh. Hey, and this is the deal, okay? If I'm going to ask you something and you don't want to answer it, um, I would rather you respect me and just say, hey, I don't, I don't want to answer that question, as opposed to not be honest with me, okay? Because for me, respect is huge. And what I'm going to do today is afford you some opportunities to help you, okay? And you don't have to believe me. And if I were you, I wouldn't. All right, because I'm a cop, and you're sitting there in black and white, and you're going back to a jail cell. I'm this police officer. I probably the last person you should trust in the world is me. Would you agree with that? No, no. You don't have to trust me. All right. Okay. All I want you to do is listen to what I'm saying, and you can draw your own conclusions and you can make your own decisions based on that. It's not about trust. It's about logic. All right. All right. What do you know about that? It belongs to Jesus, and it was in my motel room. Okay. And why was it in your motel room? Because we cleaned out the trunk of his car. When did you clean out the trunk of his car? A long time before they came and searched my room, um, which I allowed them to search willingly. Where was it at in the room? Underneath the bed. Okay. When I was down there, I wasn't sure. Why was it under the bed? Did you see the pictures in my room? Yes. Okay. Anything else important about that backpack? Uh, it's not my stuff, so I don't go through people's stuff. Like okay. Why did they leave it there? Like I said, we were cleaning up the trunk of his car. I had his speaker box. I had some granite from the job they had, and... He left that there. Okay. You leave it next to the bed, times go by, and I didn't even know I was there until we were, I, they were moving everything around, and they looked down there, I got in the ground, and pulled it out and gave it to him. I'm going to come back to this, and I'm going to come back to some of the testing and everything that was done on the interior of the bag and what was found. Do you know her? No. Okay. What's her name? Doesn't mean anything to you. No. And you don't know that gun. Never seen that gun before. Okay. So the interesting thing about her is that she was dating Mr. Jesus. Okay. And that picture is actually taken in a place that Jesus lived. And that blanket is still up in the background. And the girl has since moved off to Colorado. You know that spot? I thought he was going to Rosalinda. Oh, this was a little bit before that. Let's go back almost a year. How long have you known Jesus? I've known him for probably about 13 years, but I haven't had contact with him for about... When did y'all start hanging out again? About a a week before I started working with him. So prior to November of 2015, when was the last time you saw him? The day, um, the day that brother called me in the tab top of me, I got out and he uh, contacted me and asked me what was going on and I told him not know much. Like they just asked me a bunch of questions. He took me to the lawyer to make sure my probation doesn't get violated. Who took you there? This was okay. But prior prior to the murder, you start working for him about a week before the murder. Three weeks. Okay. And before those three weeks, when was the last time you saw him? I mean, well, you're talking about years. Okay. So you basically you haven't seen this guy for years, and he pops back in your life, and you're hanging with him for three months, and all of a sudden there's a dead chick. Yeah. Long story short, right? Pretty much. And okay. Can you bring some warm water or something? Because I'm cold now. Is there anybody getting warm water? Yeah. Thank you. So, <clears throat> haven't seen him for a couple of years. Pops back in your life, gets you a job. You're working together for three weeks, and bada bing, bada boom, there's a dead body. Yeah. What does he ever say to you about the body afterwards? Yeah. There's more? Oh, here, is that okay? Or? 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, unless, uh, like, if I can get some, well, I'll, I'll drink that, but if I can get, like, some warm water from the squash stuff, I'm cold. That's the only thing. Uh, I mean, that's probably the warm. It makes our bosses warm. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So, um, it's cold. <laughs> so what's he ever say to you afterwards about it? Well, what he was telling me is that, you know, he was sad about it. He was really close to her. Mm -hmm. They got a long grade. And he was just trying to figure out how to comfort John with everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But little by little, as the investigation went on, they were really told me not to talk to John, and then they told me not to talk to Sue, so contact was really like, trying to break off. Okay, would it surprise you to know that this young lady told us about six months prior to the murder that Jesus talked to her about how he was going to get paid to commit a murder. He was going to kill his boss's wife for, I think it was $9,000 or $4,000. It changes the dollar amount. Six months before. Would it surprise you that she said that? <laughs> she doesn't know names. She doesn't know who the guy's name is or anything, but she is dating him. They're having sexual relations and all this other stuff. And he makes a statement to her that he's going to come into some money because he's fixing to kill his boss's wife. Does it surprise you that she would say this? Does it surprise you that this is Jesus's gun, a 40 caliber Springfield XD? So six months before he goes to her and he says... I'm fixing to get a bunch of money. I'm fixing to kill my boss's wife because he wants custody of the kids and he doesn't want to pay her any money down the road or child support or anything like that. Six months prior to the murder. Now, when do we find this out? Well, we find this out after the murder, right? Because she comes forward afterwards when she sees it. Would you believe her? I mean, if you're me, would you believe her? That's what she said, dang. She could be some jilted ex-lover, right? I mean, hell, look at her. She's this gangbanger type. Look at she's wearing a mask. She's got a, a gun, right? All that stuff going on, right? Would you believe her? I mean, that's a lot to make up. It is. And it's especially amazing. what's going on, I mean... Kind of falls into line a little bit. Yeah. So would you believe her? Considering the facts that I've heard so far, it kind of goes hand in hand. Mm hmm I mean, what she's saying and what Roulette's been telling me, I mean, it sounds like what they were coming on to and what she says kind of matches up. <laughs> this is brain surgery, right? Because this guy's really smart. So since we're dealing with girls, let's just keep dealing with girls. You know this young lady? No. No clue. Uh -uh. Guess who she dated? Jesus. Yeah. Guess what Jesus told her over a year before the murder? Guess. Same thing. Jesus tells her a year before the murder that he's fixing to come into a bunch of money because he's fixing to kill his boss's wife so his boss can keep custody of the children a year before. Now, bullshit, right? Would you believe that? Two jilted ex-lovers, right? Get this shit. She's so freaked out by it, guess what she does? Calls Dallas Police Department and reports it over a year before the murder. Gives Jesus his name, says, I don't know the boss's name, but I know that he says he's getting paid $4,000 to kill her so his, his, uh, so he gets custody of the kids. Wow. A year. Recorded telephone call a year in advance. 
Do you think Jesus is a brain surgeon? Tell me he's not the dumbest son of a bitch you ever heard of in your entire life. Two different people. So let's throw her out. Gangbanger chick with the XD, right? 40 caliber gun. Just so it has to be the same caliber a weapon that killed Laura, right. right? In a picture, right? And this girl saying that that's Jesus's gun in a place that we put the Jesus because we went back and found the SpongeBob thing hanging over the... Uh, the window where he was staying at the time and she says six months in advance that Jesus told her he was going to get paid I think $9,000 at that time for killing his boss's wife <laughs> and his big debate at this time is whether he should reach out to some homies in Mexico and have him do it in which case he'd probably only get about $2,000 he'd skim off the top or if he could just do it himself and then pocket the whole thing. That's his big debate, but it's going to happen. And then a year, six months before this, he tells her that his boss approached him to kill his wife, and he was going to get paid $9,000 to do it so his boss would get custody of the kids. So you think those two stories are legitimate? One plus one equals two. You know this joker. I'm going to show you all this stuff just because I don't want you to think that I'm blowing smoke or I'm lying or anything like that. David Arendo. Arendado. A-R-R-E-D-O-N-D-O. -E David. Um, Dips is supposedly his brother, right? Is it? I've only met one of his brothers, and this was when we were all young in high school. Mm -hmm. the, David, the name of David sounds familiar. I think you know, David told me about that about a storage or something. Am I right or wrong? You're right. It's his brother. Okay. So guess what he said? Surely his brother wouldn't give him up, right? This is a big thing. It's not... You think brother wants to go back to prison? No. You think brother's got a long history? He approached him about being a driver on the deal because he wanted to take two different vehicles and he needed two cars, but he didn't use them. And guess who got mad because they didn't get paid? Why? Because David said, if the kids are there, I'm going to kill the kids too. Yeah, and guess what? Our boy, right, he knows David, and David's a crazy son of a bitch, and he knows that David would kill the kids, and he knows he's not going to get any money if he kills the kids, right? Instead, he's probably going to have John coming after his ass, so cuts him out. Statement saying that. Several months in advance, he starts talking to him about it. He uses the name John, and he uses the name Laura, because guess who knows John? Homie. Homie. No idea. Guess what he said. See, I mean, he took little notes. <clears throat> About a week before, he starts freaking out, right? And he's freaking out because he's been out of trouble for a while, but he knew your boy, right? And he's calling him, and he's desperately telling him that he needs him to drive for a job. Guess what that job is? Guess what the job is? Same thing has been killing his boss's wife. Now, the dollar amount changes, and the amount of payment changes, and everything like that, but it's all the same thing. He needs someone to drive him there. Guess who that is? You know him? <clears throat> Another buddy. What do you what do you do you call him Jesus or what do you call him? Yeah, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> so guess what he does with him several weeks in advance? Hmm. He approaches him and offers him four thousand dollars 
to drive a car so he can do what? Kill his boss's wife so his boss can have custody of the children. What do you think about that shit? Wow. Do you think that these people just don't like him? Because, oh, by the way, these people don't know each other. You know him? Nope. Guess what his story was? Same thing. About a month before the murder, someone needed a driver and got offered $2,000. Guess what to do? Same thing. Kill his boss's wife so he could get custody of the children. Gets us to there. Gets us to there. Gets us to there. And guess who takes a picture, goes into the funeral home, right, before his wife is embalmed, or fiancé, if you want to call her that. Grabs. She's dead, right? She's had an autopsy. She's been cut open, all that other stuff. He undoes the bag because he wants to see his wife one last time, and there's witnesses there to this, and guess what he does? He grabs her breasts and said, ooh, I want to grab those titties one last time, bitch. And then he takes a picture of her dead and keeps it as a memento on his phone so he can remember the fact that he had her killed. So all this because of this. And that's just the start. So let me ask you this question. What do you think? <laughs> Sounds like he's doing some shit. So how many people is that? Like five? And we've got a documented report, a 911 call a year in advance. Now, you know what? Law enforcement gets a little mud on their face on that one because if they do anything with it, it goes to DPS, Criminal Intelligence Division, and they write a report about it. They do a background. But honestly, they got other stuff going on. They got terrorism. They got serial killers. They got all kinds of shit. And this is kind of normal stuff. You know, you get phone calls. But guess what? This is Texas. You know what I mean? It's hearsay. Guess what? In that phone call, she names Laura. Right? She names John because she knows him because why? She's been over to the house before. Okay. Um, so. I understand that. Can you pull me from um, well, I think, and I think I, it would I, be better to. I, after my dad was diagnosed with severe, I've seen him cough up a lot of blood, and I don't like seeing his blood. And that's important to me, all right? Because and I'm going to go back to that. So, based on all this stuff, right now and right here, do you think that there's a case against Jesus? Yeah. Okay. Let me throw another thing at you. Okay. Did you know that he had an app on his phone that recorded all the phone calls? Yeah. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? That was him. And Did he ever say why? For uh, the job? When he talks to his customers? So when you talk to him, did you know you're being recorded? Or did you think that was an app that he could turn on and off? I never considered it. Did you know that that app backs up to a cloud? <laughs> you know what that means? You know how you back up your iPhone? Uh-huh. You know how, in case you lose it? And there's a cloud, right? And it's sitting there. And all that stuff that's on your iPhone, you can trash it, you can light it on fire, you can do whatever, but it's sitting there. Okay. Do you know what a preservation order is? because it's something that Rowlett did right. When you have a crime, you do a preservation order of everyone's cell phone. You know what that means? That means that the carrier, the cloud, and Apple, they don't have to give you the information that's on the phone or that's in the cloud, but they have to preserve it and make sure it's not destroyed. Because if you don't do that, there's a push, and you'll lose data because as storage goes up and up, it pushes the old stuff off, right? You delete a message, it's on your phone for a little bit, but a week down the road, it'll be gone. Right? Because it's, it's getting pushed off the memory. But if you do a preservation order, none of that shit can leave. 
Okay. Okay. That's pretty smart. The problem was is they didn't know what to do with it after that. Well, they discovered the app. So, would you have an app like he showed, that? He showed them the app. Yeah, yeah. Well, he showed them the app after he got caught in something. Right? As a way to prove that his, his then girlfriend was not necessarily telling the truth. <laughs> Which is interesting because she says at 945 that she got a phone call saying that his wife's, his boss's wife was dead two hours before it was reported to police. <laughs> Brain surgeon, right? Wow. So that's why he showed him the app. But what he didn't realize We'll go to that in a minute. But what he didn't realize is that he's not turning the damn thing off. In other words, he's recording every conversation that he ever made. And I think you were privy to part of that. Right? Didn't they play a recording, part of a recording? Yeah. Okay, that was what was on his phone. All right. Do you remember what that recording said? Yes. What did it say? Um, something about me knowing and, and I was with them. Yep. They're communicating that they were worried that you were going to talk and that they were all going to go down because they broke you, because the police were threatening you with probation violation or, or whatever, and that's what they were worried about. Okay, that's what the conversation is. They played you part of that conversation. All right. I'm not even going to ask you why they would say that. We'll get to that. Okay. Well, I step in, and guess what I do? Because they have a preservation order, I do a search warrant on the cloud. And guess what else is on the cloud? All the phone conversations, because he's a dumbass. Because he wasn't turning the app on and off, he was just leaving it on. Right? His conversations with John, his conversations with you, his conversations with his girlfriend, his conversations with these people that he's trying to get to do this. How do you think we come up with all these people? Two of them step forward. How do you think we come up with the guys? Phone conversations. It's recorded. They can't even deny it. So what do they do? They sit down and they write an affidavit about it. And they tell the story, and they tell how they had a meeting with him, and how they talked about it a bunch. And they talk about his planning and what he was planning to do, and how he's talking about wearing rubber booties or the covers on his feet so he wouldn't leave any footprints, and how he's going to use blue latex gloves like were found in the bag. Right? All those different things. Okay. He's done on that alone. Tells five different people before the murder that he's going to kill her for his boss, so his boss can get custody, and then he's going to get paid for it. He's soliciting three of these people to work as drivers for him because he really wants two cars. Okay. He's done. That's enough. Right there. Boom. You got a body. You know? That's beautiful. It's done. Any court in the, in the country will convict him of capital murder. Right? We go back and find the stuff on the cloud, and it's just awesome. Well, what else does it wrong? His phone. If you're going to go commit a murder, what should you do with your phone? Um, not have it with you. Or turn it off and wrap it in aluminum foil so the signal doesn't hit. Because what happens even if you're not making phone calls? What's your phone continually doing? You know those service bars? Send a signal? Yeah. And you know the number of bars? What's that mean? It means tower oh, strength. Yeah. Right? And where are there towers for cell phones? Everywhere. You know what you can do with those towers on the phone? You can triangulate them, and you can find out exactly where someone is. Uh-huh. So we know when the murder occurred, based on how long the body had been there, body temperature and everything like that, and guess where he was? Huh? He was at the house. He committed the murder. It's pretty easy. Okay. You agree? Well, plus one equals two. Right. And what's my job? To come in and close, right? Yeah. 
So it's rocking on for six months, and what does the governor want me to do? Finish it up. Arrest people. Right. Right. But I'm so anal retentive, I don't only arrest them. I could go get a warrant and just arrest them, right? And then we got to go and wait and see if the grand jury is going to see if there's enough information to indict them. And once you're indicted, that means you're, you're going to plead or you're going to go to trial, right? Right. So, but I'm anal retentive, and I have all this evidence, so what do I do? Do I get an arrest warrant? Yeah. No. I go present it to a grand jury, and I have them indicted. I skip the whole process because I got so much shit, which means this path has started, and it's not going to turn around. In other words, you can't turn around and say, well, he's indicted. Now we're not going to do anything with it. <laughs> you got probable cause that he committed the murder, so you either have to uh, convict him of it, you got to go to trial, or he can plead to it. That's it. Okay. So all that evidence, everything laid out, boom, 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 boom. So what do I do? I do. Read that. this morning. That's why that guy came in here because it's hot off the press. Means I went to a grand jury on Tuesday, everything was presented, they turned around and found the true bill. There's enough information to indict, which means we're going to go to trial or he's going to plead guilty. Okay. What's he do in this case? Think he goes to trial on that? <laughs> you better take it to his lick. <laughs> you better learn how to take your lick, man. I mean, man. So what's he do? And I, I'm not the district attorney, I'm not the grand jury, I'm not the district judge, I'm not a jury. But as you point out, he's a dumbass. Mm -hmm. What do you think he's going to do? Go sit on death row for 12 years and get the needle? What would you do if you were him? I think he's going to try to fight. You think? Do you think you'd try to cut a deal? Mm -hmm. You're looking at the mitigation of damages, right? You're screwed. You're done. And so now you got to figure out well, what's going to work out best for you. Well, sitting on death row for 12 years doesn't sound like a good deal, does it? Capital murder, life or death. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut a deal. What does he have to deal? What can he do to help himself? What are his cards? I don't know. What do you think? He's caught up in this murder. He knows that we're going to prove that he did it. We already proved it. So what does he do? What is his leverage? He doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to sit on death row for 12 years. He wants a deal, right? Mm -hmm. Mitigation of damages. So what do you think he does? Do everything. Well, if he told us everything, then don't you think that we would turn around and get an arrest warrant on someone else? I mean, if he just rolled the whole thing and gave everything up, don't you think that we would have enough to arrest other people? Mm -hmm. and that's really the only way that we'd be able to arrest other people, more than likely, right? Right. It's his testimony. So he would have to agree to give testimony and give up all the facts of everything that happened, right? Right. It's the only way we could arrest other people. Would you agree? Yes. What is that? <laughs> I have no idea. It's just another indictment, but I don't have 
What's an indictment for? Capital murder. Yep, his name is on that indictment. I don't. Can you help me? I'm John. That's his real name. I can't tell you everything, but I can tell you, well, you can conclude, because when people give information, we obviously don't say what it is, but you can conclude from a capital murder warrant issued for John this morning, what did Jesus do? Okay. Yeah. That's why we're sitting here today. Why would we be sitting here today? Because of the phone call that Rolette has about me. And then what else? You're staring at it. It's so tower mapping. It's tower mapping of his travels and his phone calls and where he was and how we know that he committed the murder. Okay. What's one of the first mapping points on there? Early in the morning. Mine was up. Yeah. So why do you think that I'm sitting here visiting with you? Why do you think that I'm sitting here talking to you about options and different things that are out there? You need to get on the bus or sit on the sideline. All right. I'm not the district attorney. I'm not the grand jury. I'm not a district judge. I'm not a jury of your peers or anything like that. But I'm telling you right now that it's more important for you to be a witness than to be an actor. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. The only way that you can do that is be honest. Okay. All right. If you're not honest, then there's nothing anyone can do for you. All right. But at the end of the day, you don't need to go down for any of this. All right. Period. I mean, is that... <laughs> do you comprehend that? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand what he said? I don't know what he said. Do you understand where the cell phone is, where he is? I understand the towers, but you do know he lives right around the corner from my apartment, right? Yeah, but we put him in your apartment. It's your choice, okay? That's it. I mean, it's your choice. But you can be a witness in this deal, all right? You don't have to get caught up in this deal. Why should you be worried? Because capital murder is an all-inclusive offense. You don't have to be the person who pulls the trigger, all right? You just have to have knowledge of it, all right? You have to have some part in it, some form. Chances are, I don't even think that you necessarily knew why you were driving him there. We know that he freaked out because he couldn't get anyone else to drive him, all right? We know from the phone conversations and the other things that you're the last person. Did you know why you were driving him there? <laughs> you think I... I don't think. It's your decision. This is probably the most important moment of your life, but you have a choice to make. All these people have already turned and given information. I'm not going to tell you what he said, but you know that there's an arrest warrant issued for John. I can't lie about that. I can't make that shit up. Right. It's an indictment. All right. If I forge that document or make it up, then I've committed a felony. All right. I can't do that. Plus, everything that ever happened after that would be inadmissible in court. All right. That's why I had him bring down those originals with the stamp on it. Okay. But it's your choice where we go from here. I mean, I can pack up my shit and I can walk out of this room, but I did something on purpose. All right. I did not have you indicted on this because I don't want to have you indicted on this. All right. I'm not the decision maker. I'm just a guy who facilitates between all these different people. I'm a guy who acts between the original investigators and the DA's office and the DA's investigators and the courts and everything like that. I'm like this deal maker. I'm like Donald Trump, right? But I don't have any power to offer
offer a deal. I don't have anything to throw out there to you, all right? Because I'm not that decision maker. But I can tell you right now that my goal in this and why you haven't been indicted in this is because I want your help. But that's your choice, and you don't have to do that, all right? But if you don't do that, then you can guess where this is going next, all right? Because then you're part of it, all right? And it's much better to be a witness than an actor, than part of it. In other words, you don't need to get caught up in this shit, but you need to make a decision right now what's going to happen for the rest of your life, all right? And the only way that you can stay out of this thing and again, I'm not the decision maker, right? But the only way I think that you can stay out of this thing is to help yourself out and to be a witness. Does the DA's office want a witness? Yeah, they want a witness. But you got to make that decision, and it starts with the truth. I mean, this is kind of where you steer the boat and you make a decision. But getting caught up in a capital murder case and sitting on death row doesn't seem the way to go. You can look at that as long as you want, mm -hmm. but it doesn't change the decision that you have to make and that you're faced with. But at the end of the day, you can already conclude what he said, and you already know what those people said because I told you. Right. And what the mapping evidence says. So now it's just your choice if you want to be a witness. I held out because I looked at your criminal history and I looked at who you were and I looked at if you were capable of pulling the trigger or doing anything. All right. And what I saw was kind of a stooge. He got brought back into this thing at the last minute because the other people all backed out on him. He needed a driver. You can be a witness, you can lay it out. You can tell me to go pound sand and I'll leave you alone. But the decision that you make right now is a decision that's going to make a determination on how the rest of your life is going to go. You said it best when you made the statement that that phone call ruined your life doesn't have to ruin your life. It doesn't have to ruin your life. You need to understand that. And this is a point right now where it's mitigation of damages time. It's what happens with all this. How does it affect you? And it's time to be egocentric. You know what that means? It means that the world right now rotates around you and you worry about you because I'm telling you right now no one else is worrying about you. About you. I told you I like to go home at night and I like to sleep and put down my head and I give people opportunities and I give them options and they make that decision and whatever it is, all I know is that I gave you the opportunity. I think I'm doing the right thing by giving you the opportunity and giving you that option. If you don't take that, 
that's on you. I go to bed tonight, I put my head down, and I don't think about it again because I don't have to. And I gave you that choice. And at the end of the day, life is about choices. <clears throat> but you, my friend, control your destiny right now. You control what's going to happen for the rest of your life. Excuse me. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a bitch, my friend. I don't think this is your fault. There's a reason that he reached out to you three weeks ago and he got you a job. Because everyone else has turned him down and he set you up like a little bitch. And you don't even want to know the shit that he's saying. You think about that when somebody gets back in the corner and they know that they're done. And he knows that he's done. You don't have a choice. You really don't. And you know that. I knew that coming into this room today. I mean, unless you're just a psychopath or a crazy son of a bitch who doesn't care about the rest of your life, then you don't have a choice. And I know that's not you. There's someone who cared for your mom and tried to help her. You're a good person. Everyone makes mistakes. You got screwed. But this is your opportunity to make it right. Pretty good. What you're saying to me, what you're showing right there, you should be more concerned about what he said. He's a caged animal, he's in a corner and he's wounded, and he knows he's going down. He's scraping. Not all of what he said is the truth, and I know that. You can imagine what that is. But you gotta lay it out, you gotta fix it. I'm not the decision maker, I'm not the DA, I'm none of those people, but I turn around and I sit down with the elected DA, not an ADA, not an assistant, but I sit down with the lead person. And you know how profile this case is. I mean, hell, I'm here because of the governor, it's been all over the news, right? Mm -hmm. And you know who they want at the end of the day in this. That's the good thing. There's three people out there. Two of them got targets all over them.
The last time I talked to her later about this, we were talking about doing a polygraph. Mm -hmm. And also, I have asked after the last time they visited me in ISF, and I got upset. I said what I said to them. They left. He came back again. Every single thing I figured out on this charge. I'm not here to offer you a polygraph. And why I'm saying that is because I don't have to. There's nothing in it for me. I've already made the case. Okay. We're, we're past that. Where we're at right now is how we move forward. You know, and that's your decision, how we move forward in this deal. I mean, you, you're a good guy. I mean, you're not a bad person, all right? You know that he did some fucked up shit. I mean, look at those kids. Come on. You don't do that. But I'm telling you, man, you don't want to be part of the losing team. You want me to be your friend, and you want me to help you out, okay? I can go to the DA. I can tell them that you're helping. It's more important to them for you to be a witness, okay? But you don't have to do that. Does this ever go to trial? No. Why? She's already confessed. Never goes to trial. Problem is, is a confession needs corroboration. Well, we've got that with all these statements and all these people. But they want you. That's why I'm here. And you gotta make that decision. But if you're not gonna separate yourself from those two knuckleheads, a guy who has the mother of his child murdered in cold blood in his house, and the guy who sticks a gun up to a lady's head who's a mother, and shoots her point blank. If you're not going to separate yourself from those two, then you're going to get wrapped in with them. And capital murder is a conspiracy crime, which means you don't have to pull the trigger. All you got to do is drive. All you got to do is know about it. Take any single part in it whatsoever. This is what I need from you. Let's talk hypothetically. Okay. Hypothetically, on what you need to do, and you can work through it, you can say, hypothet say hypothetically. Okay. Say it. Hypothetically. Do you know what that means? Theori theoretically. Doesn't mean that it happened, doesn't mean that it didn't happen, just means that it's some shit that we're going to talk about. All right. Does hypothetically get you in trouble? No, it's just you're just talking about shit, right? So say hypothetically again. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, why don't you tell me how this went down and why don't you see how I can help you? We can work from there. I'll help you with the statement. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to trust me. You just have to listen to what I'm saying. And that's it. You're a smart guy. Hypothetically, tell me what happened. What went down? When did you first find out that this was going to happen? Was it the night before, or was it three weeks before? You're on the edge of the Grand Canyon, right? You're looking down at this giant hole. And what I'm going to ask you to do is take a leap of faith and to trust me. All right? And logically think through that. It makes sense. You know, but you can jump off that Grand Canyon and I'm going to hand you a parachute so you land safely on the ground. But you got to take that leap of faith to start. And you got to trust me. And if you've ever trusted anyone in your life, today's the day. Because there's no one else that can help you in this deal. I just want to go home. Right. There's an opportunity for that. You steer the boat, man. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and make your promises. 
All right, because I'm not that person, but I'm not going to sit here and blow you know, smoke up your ass. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'll tell you what's going to happen. If you don't play, you can get indicted for capital murder. If you do, provide information. Separate yourself from those two. I have a feeling that at the end of the day, there's not going to be a whole lot there that's going to hurt you. Does that mean you're going to walk scot-free? I don't know. Maybe that's up to the DA. All right, you're... A to Z, right? A is walking out the door and Z is going to death row. You need to find something that's not Z closer to A. Could you walk out the door? Maybe that's up to them. You know, I know in these cases that it's much better to have one person as a witness. In other words, as long as you didn't walk in and pull the trigger, all right, as long as you weren't planning this thing six months or a year in advance, then I don't think you're bad off. My guess is that he probably approached you maybe three weeks before, maybe the night before, and told you that he needed a ride. Hypothetically, when did he first start talking to you about this? Say, it, say hypothetically. Hypothetically. When did this first start coming up? Three weeks before, the night before, two nights before. Why is that important to me? Planning, forethought, right? It's important to me. It's part of the, the charge, right? It's part of the element of capital murder. It's premeditated. It was planned. Okay, I know that from him. From what he said, I know that from what all these other people said. But if you're not caught up in this thing, you know, and I'll be honest with you, you know, if you were caught up in this thing a year in advance, if you're the trigger man, then you know what, maybe it's best to say, hey, Ranger, have a good day, all right? But that's not the case. I know that. But you need to separate yourself from that, and you need to say it. When did he first tell you about this? He needed a ride. Oh. Oh. All right, let's see. Let's see. I... Say so hypothetically. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, when did he first approach you? Was it three weeks before when he gave you the job? Or was it the day or the night before? I can corroborate what you're going to say from the recordings and from what other people said. I already know what the answer is, but you need to say it. Separates you from it. Right? Think about it logically. Separates you from it. It does. Right? Yeah? So hypothetically, when is he approaching? Is there any way we can do this with a third person present? To be honest with you, you control the boat, you can do whatever you want. But I'm fixing to head out the store and go arrest John. Okay. But there's no need for me to come back and talk to you once I do that. You understand what I'm saying? That's why it's important right now. Because you don't know what John's going to say. What do you think John's going to do? It's all going to be put in front of him, and the recordings are going to be played for him, and he's going to have no choice but to confess, and he's going to admit it. And what's he going to do when he does that? He's going to implicate you as a driver, okay? Because they're worried. They're worried about what you're going to say. He's going to implicate you, and I don't have to come back in here and talk to you anymore because my case is made. But I don't want John to be my witness. The DA doesn't want John to be the witness, all right? I don't even want to talk to John. I'm going to get my confession from John. 
and that's it. He did a bad thing. Killed the mother of those children. Killed his wife, his fiance, woman he was living with for five years. But you know that he's going to confess to this, and you know that he's going to implicate you, and you know, as a law enforcement officer, and it, it definitely is like my decision, because you know what the DA is going to say? Talk to him again. Why would I talk to you again? I got two people that are saying you're the driver. Right? Why do I come back and talk to you? Is that an element of capital murder? Yeah, it is. So you don't want me to leave this room and you don't want me to go arrest John before you give your statement. Because then I don't need your statement. And I don't think that's the right thing to do. But that's your choice. Hypothetically, when does he approach John this first time? Start with, with hypotheticals and let me, let me help you through this, okay? Do you understand what hypothetical means? Hypothetically, when does he first approach you? It's a self-serving world, my friend. You know that, and I know that. And you know that me and you are never going to go barbecue together. I'm not going to go to your kid's quinceanera. I'm not going to go to your next wedding or your baptism or any of that stuff, because life doesn't work like that. All right? But today I can be the best friend in the world, and you need a good friend to me. All right? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm not. Does it matter to me what happens to you? Does it? No. I mean, you're a smart guy. Come on, I'm not going to bullshit you or anything like that. What matters to me is this case. Okay? Is it the right thing to give you an opportunity? Yeah, it is. Does it help my case? Yeah. Do I need it? No. It's an egocentric world. You need to worry about you and my worries in this case. Does that mean that I want you to get hurt or I want anything to happen to you? No, nope. I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Does it mean that if you decide to cooperate and, uh, and help out in this field, does it mean that I'm going to do everything I can to help you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? But am I your friend right now? I'm the best friend you have in the whole freaking world. Hypothetically, when does he tell you? Why am I starting with that question? Why would I start with that question? Isn't there some better shit you can tell me than when did he first approach you about it? Proving you up. I know the answer to the questions that I'm going to ask you, right? We've got to corroborate it and prove you up. Because if that doesn't prove you up, then everything you say after that's probably bullshit. And then we'll just stop this thing. Hypothetically, when does he reach out to you about driving? Um. Are you going to get your pen and paper? Tell me. I'll write down after I know what you're going to say because I'm trying to help you, believe it or not. You want me to write it down now? I will. <laughs> 
start me off. Let's see where we can go. Do you believe that I'm trying to help you? Yes. Then let me do that. Believe it? When does he first approach you on this? It's so hard, but you gotta take that leap. I can't do it for you. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't do it for you. I can't put words in your mouth. All right, it's gotta come from you. If I know the answers, I don't need to ask you the questions. But you have to say it. That's the only way you can separate yourself from this, and you know it. You smart guy. All you can do right now is make life better for you. That's it. But you're the only one who can do it. You can tell me to pound sand. You can tell me to leave. You can do whatever you want. You know you don't have to be in here right now. You know you can tell me you want to leave. You don't want to talk to me. All right? But you know what happens next. Yeah. I don't think you want that. You want me right? No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. So how does it kick off? First step's always the hardest one. It is. You gotta take it. Take the leap of faith and let me hand you that parachute. How's it kick off? Three weeks before, the night before? You can be all right through this, all right? You gotta trust me, and I'm gonna be saying it right there. When you think about it, it doesn't make any sense for, my, for me to let you go down, right? In a ball of flames or anything, it doesn't help me. I don't want that, all right? That's not the right thing. You're not a killer. You're not the person who paid for this. You're not the person who pulled the trigger, all right? You got stooged in this deal because no one else would do it, and he's a dumbass, all right? You got screwed over by him. Do you have to look at everything I've been through? Do, do what? You have to look at everything I've been through. Since the beginning of all this. Mm -hmm. You've seen everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've seen how I was resting in possession, done ISF, back here, and something else. And you know what it said between all those times. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, have you heard the conversation between me and them at ISF? Yep. Yeah. You remember what I pointed out to them? 
about the what? About the possession charge? No, enlighten me. And that's why I was asking you about drugs up front. All right. I know you're in a hard spot. Live in a fucking hotel. All right. I was clean. I was. But you're in a hard spot, and you're trying to stay that way. You got dragged into something that you didn't know shit about. I know that. But you got to separate yourself from it. You're not a killer. <clears throat> You had a guy who plans murders. How do you understand the sight of blood? Right? I know all that shit. The problem is, is if you don't separate yourself right now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who pulled the trigger. Right? It just matters that you're part of it. Don't be part of it. Lay it out. Separate yourself. What do you think he's saying? You think he's helping you out? What do you think? You think for a second he's helping you out? This is your opportunity. You know, I said it a bunch of times before, you know, I, I go to bed with a clear conscience because I give you the opportunity, you know, but I don't want you to be sitting on death row in 12 years kicking yourself in the ass because you didn't listen to that Texas Ranger. He didn't talk to that Texas Ranger. Right? I mean, do you think he goes there right now? Goes where? Death Row. How do you think I got that second warrant? Who would have to talk for me to get that second one? He's trying to save his ass. But this is the deal, he can save his ass. He can avoid death row, all right? But that just means other people are going down. And that's why I'm saying they're not going to tell me to come back and talk to you. They got it. It's done. You know? This is your time to help yourself out. To separate yourself. Is that right? Is it right if you go to death row? Uh, did you pull the trigger? So should you go to death row? Were you planning this thing for a year in advance? Was it your wife? Did you pay for it? No. But at the end of the day, unless you separate yourself from it, it doesn't really matter. When does he first approach you? I'm going to say something. Don't be discouraged. Hypothetically, if you're right, mm -hmm. and you say the truth and everything, and I do know all this, and I tell all this stuff to you hypothetically, and what exactly would I be looking at? Let me be very clear. All right, I'm not going to lie to you on this, okay? I'm not the district attorney. I'm not the district judge. I'm none of those people. What do I think? I think that you're looking at being a witness. Unless you tell me something different, that's what I think. Is that a guarantee that they're never going to try to prosecute for anything? No, there's no guarantees. But also, what do they want? Well, does this stuff ever go to trial? No, but they want to sit there and say that they have a witness. All right, does it help them to prosecute the witness? No, it helps them to separate you from this whole mess. Does that make sense? You've seen enough TV shows, right? You see three guys who all testify against each other that are all uh, arrested for murder, and you see two guys that are arrested for capital murder, and one guy who's up there being a witness. 
there's a lifeline to be thrown. I'm not the guarantee guy, all right? All I can tell you is the way I think things work out. I think that that's a really good probability, all right? A to Z, death row, hey, you walk out the door. You make that decision. I mean, if I have to sit here all day and pull teeth from you or give you an grundy or something like that, none of the things that I'm gonna do, then obviously that doesn't present uh, the way the district attorney's office would like that. What the district attorney's office like is for someone to say, hey, you know what, I didn't plan this deal, I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger, I know about it, I got stooged into it, and this is what happened, boom, 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 boom. Okay, now you think about that from a logical standpoint, is it better for them to have you as a witness? Yeah. So what do I think? No promises, that's what I think. There's a reason that I didn't get that warrant. You know I can get that warrant. I didn't get that warrant. Why didn't I get that warrant? I want you to be a witness. Is there any chance after this conversation that when I go back and, and get this charge that I'm on right now mm -hmm. dropped, if there's any way I can get back on probation, I'll, I'll even put a GPS anchor on me if you want. Mm -hmm. I just... Let me say again, okay? I'm not the decision maker and I'm not going to make you promises. I'm not going to jack with you charge right now. Why? Because if I do that, then it looks like I'm doing something wrong. So your charge that you have right now is your charge. And I'm looking about forward stuff. When you get out, you get out. I don't, I don't care if they put you out on probation, then that's fine. What I do care about is your safety. So I'm not going to put you in harm's way. In other words, I'm going to keep you safe. That's my job, okay? So whatever I have to do to do that, I do, because then you're resp my responsibility. Could I see you getting out on probation for whatever you have going on now? Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't, but I'm not the decision maker on that, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about it, all right? All I can tell you is what's going to happen on the other end, <laughs> you know? That's all on you. I mean, I'm not going to uh, walk you out the door right now and drive you to Mama's house. That's, that's not what I do, you know? But I do know the other end of this, is Z and Z doesn't give you very many opportunities, you know. So, but the BS stuff that you have going right now, I mean, that's kind of on you. So, but it's my job to make sure that you know you're safe. I mean, I'm not going to put you in a cell with him or put you in general population or anything like that. What's the best thing? I think the best thing is for you to get out on probation. But I'm not the one who makes that decision. Who is? This attorney. At the end of the day. They're the decision makers. They're the ones who, who make it. All I do is leave here and say, hey, this is what he said or this is what he didn't say, and then they start making decisions. Do I have input in that? Yeah. Ranger, was he telling you the truth? Yeah. Is he credible? Yes. Did he pull the trigger? No. Can he help us in this case? Yes. Is he sorry for what happened? Yes. But you have to say those things. And kind of like I said before, there's not a whole lot of choice in this. I mean, before I came in this room, I knew where we were going to go with this. I knew ultimately what's going to happen. I still know what's going to happen. Because you're not a moron. You're not a sociopath, you're not a psychopath, you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison, you sure as hell don't want to go down for what two other knuckleheads did. So now you got to help yourself. Mitigation of damages. Okay, uh, whatever, guys, just give me a second, please. Oh, 
Is that possible? I don't know. I give you a dip, but I'm guessing you probably throw up all over me. Sometimes you're willing to try something. <laughs> Ready? Just before I came in here, or before uh, they put me out the last holding tank, there's a guy in here, he was in a long conversation with the other one, there was only three of us in there. He wasn't talking to me much, and then again he comes in. She still starts talking to you, like... So he talked to me about the Bible. Huh? Started telling him what I know about the Bible. So I cry a little bit. We the guy calling me back to him. I'm well versed in the Bible. What's God telling you now? Because I'll give you my favorite verse from the Bible. And it's others. You'll never find the path to redemption and righteousness and glory until you recognize in your life that it's not about you, it's about others. It's not about what happens to you, and it's not the things that you do. It's the way that things that you do affect others. And until you give your life to Christ and recognize that it's all about others, you'll never be redeemed. This is about others right now. It's about her. It's about these kids. It's about her mom. Others. And sometimes we just have to say, you know, they're more important than I am. You saying sorry, what does that mean? Are you sorry? Say it. Say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a sorry. All right, now we make it about others. We make it about her. We make it about those kids that are going to grow up without a mom. Then we fix it as best we can. At the end of the day, the Bible talks about redemption and also talks about punishment. And you know that people are going to be punished for this deal. But you need to look at that path of redemption and righteousness and glory. And it begins by accepting the Lord and accepting his teachings and his doctrines. And it begins with thinking about others and realizing that at the end of the day, you're just not that important. It's about the other people. And it's about the lives that you affect. And right now, you can affect these lives. You want that murder and son of a bitch? To grow up being their parents, want him to get custody of those kids, knowing that he killed their mother. She's taking care of her special needs brother. You know, she's not a bad person. He claims that she's screwing around and doing all this other stuff. It's all bullshit. He was paranoid. He was going through her emails and her cell phones and wouldn't allow her to talk to the neighbors. You know, people like that, people who won't let their girlfriend talk to anyone. They're always paranoid that she's cheating on them or screwing around, but she wasn't doing any of that. He was. He was out there, did a bunch of different chicks. He could have stepped away from the deal. He didn't have to marry her. Custody over what? One kid? You want him raising those kids? How do you think they turn out? Their dad had their mother murdered in their house. You don't want that. That's not right. 
you let the Lord guide your path right now and you talk about the Bible and knowing it and talking to that guy about Jesus Christ well what does Jesus Christ tell you right now do the right thing pray for forgiveness confess your sins move on with life it's how you go forward past is the past it's what you do with the rest of your life how do you affect others you want that monster to raise her he was trying to get custody of the other two as well same guy who takes his picture and grabs her breasts you know that he paid that over right there can I just see lived in that house right there he did that he lived in that house she cooked him dinner she made him breakfast she did his laundry and then it turned him anything to live there same guy same guy some fucked up shit When does he first approach you? three weeks before and the night before. This isn't you, man. And that's not you. It's just not. It's not who you are. It's not your DNA. It's not how your mama raised you. It's not you. You know that. No, I know that. When's he reach out? The night before, or a couple days before, or a week before, or three weeks before? When's he first talk to you? Mm-hmm. What was your name again, sir? Jim. Jim? Ranger Holland. Jim Holland. Hypothetically, does he reach out three weeks before? Hypothetically. Say it. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, does he reach out three weeks before when he gets you the job? He reaches out to you three weeks before. All right? Kim, what? Holland, just like the country.
Sorry, I'm also tired because I haven't been sleeping much yesterday. Um, if it's easier for you to remember. Since that's your name. <laughs> Let me help you, man. How's it start out?
What you thinking about, James? Sorry, um, if I can yeah, get tired, sir. Um, hey, we can end this. It's up to you. Um, and I don't mean to push you, but I want a little bit of a crunch because I need to go arrest this guy. That's where I'm leaving from here. So, <sighs> throw it out there. Let's see what we can do. When does he contact you first? My name is James Vieta. Hmm? My name is James Vieta, and I... tell you folk worth, and honestly... choice. When this, when this what? You're going to go, I'm going to bring all my faith in you, sir. I'm sitting here, all right, and I told you, I'm not lying to you, I'm not blowing smoke, and I've been honest, all right, and I'm here to be your friend right now, all right? You want me as your friend. All right, when, um, you first mentioned anything about this, I disregarded it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just pot smoke. Mm -hmm. Perfect and puff. I didn't know all this was real until John sent the police were outside his house and we're all been going to call in for in uh, interrogations for an investigation. Mm -hmm. As for when he told me, see, uh, because I was blowing up, I honestly don't remember exactly when mm -hmm. he first told me about it. Because I wasn't paying any money, I was like, right, I was not talking shit. Yeah, uh -huh. right, right. <sighs> So, when do you know it's real? When, um, when John is telling, um, Jesus, we're, when we're eating lunch, that the police won't have him get in the house. Mm -hmm. So then you know that he did. What's he say that morning to you? When when he comes to your apartment, your hotel. And this is a deal, okay? I know it's hard, but it's got to be the truth because you know that he's already talked, okay? And this is to separate you from him, all right? So it's got to be honest. I know you you know, human nature is you want to downplay as much as you can. I understand that, but what helps you here is the truth. Because if you don't tell the truth, then you're not any help to the DA. In other words, if this is kind of spattered with lies, it, it doesn't help. You jumped off the ledge, you know. You just said you, you knew, okay. So now you just need to be honest about running through it and that's what helps you but if you start going down the wrong road then it doesn't help you then all of a sudden well here's a guy who's lying so you just need to you know throw it out there so the night before does he call you about the ride or, or is it or is it that morning when he shows up because we know when it was finalized um he shows up in the morning like um, 
he tells me to get up, whatever. And honestly, I didn't pay it. So he got shot on the door. Okay. I get up. I'm growing and waking up. He's come on, let's go, get dressed, whatever. I get dressed. And we get in the car and we go. The whole time, I'm like, I'm still thinking he's bullshit. I'm like, yeah, he's really going far away, I think. Mm hmm. Come around. And, if, and I'm being really honest with you, because, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you don't have to offer the breath, but if they ask me these questions, I can ask, honestly answer these questions truthfully that. I thought it was tough enough. Okay. Yeah, I believe that. I don't think too hard to talk about Even when he gets there. Mm-hmm. He's down, he does his thing. I heard nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy's funny as hell. Comes back, gets the car, I'm, I'm looking like... <laughs> Got these, he's just huffing and puffing. Mm -hmm. no, no, nothing happened. No, we just, all right, let's, let's go back, let's go to work. Until it happened, they said it worked, that's when I found out I was actually real. Um, What happens in that meeting with John the day after when y'all go in the river together and close the door? They sit down and they start talking and they tell each other like, don't say anything, be quiet about what's going to happen, what happened. Nobody says a word. And I'm, I'm still in track about this, and I, honestly, why? Mm-hmm. Because he did have his life, he had a great life. Yeah. I mean, you can tell she loved him. Yeah. They had a great business going on. And he had the American dream family. Right. Lifestyle. Um, uh, so I, I was, I was honestly not even comfortable with it. If, if, uh, if you know about that, you know I wasn't in it. No, mm -hmm. I left the neck at home because I couldn't stand it. Was John asking for details? Did he want all the gory details of how Jesus did it, or did she say anything? Or I mean, what was he saying? What was he asking? Just everybody keep quiet, shut up. All right, so just tell me, don't talk to the cops, don't say shit. Okay. Just shut up, shut up. Talk about anything, don't say anything. No, no, I'm just. Tell me, and this is the stuff that helps you, okay? Understand that. I'm looking for things that help you. The conversation that happens in that room helps you. You know, specifically, what, is, what does John say? What does Jesus say? What are, they, what are they saying back and forth? Remember anything specifically that he said? This is the time we have to be quiet. Okay. And that's the most thing at that time. Like, keep quiet, stick to it, stick to it, you know. And uh, don't don't say anything. They don't have anything. We're good. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I'm just like, okay, yeah, all right. 
and uh, that's that's the they keep that's all what they just keep repeating to them. Right. Just shut up, keep your mouth shut. And like, yeah, I'm operational already. I, I'm not trying to get any any deep shit. Are they threatening you at all, or just shut up, or are they saying, man, don't talk or else? I got that vibe from Jesus. Because honestly, after knowing he did this, there's not something really good. Mm -hmm. And um, that conversation with John and him and there, he's not 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 too much detail, here. right? But it's pretty obvious that John ordered it. Yeah. Then John wants you to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what they just keep going over and over after that that's when I get more of a grasp of how bad Jesus is mm -hmm. um, because Jesus made a comment that I looked at and was like, what the hell, like, whoa, really? Because what his comment was that, um, don't worry, James, because uh, John knows better than the same thing. He knows what I can do. Mm -hmm. I think that's when he was trying to throw a hint my way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, so, after he comes out of the house, you don't go in the house with him or you do go in the house with him? Okay, where are you waiting at? The next block up. Okay. And when he gets back in the car, what does he say to you? That's right. Okay, do you give you any details? Did you talk about it at all? Say it's done or she cried or begged for her life or... Was he joking about it? Was he bragging or was he freaked out? Um, he said, uh, not then. He didn't say nothing. Just let's go. Okay. We're down. Um, later on, after we start heading to Home Depot, that's when he starts talking. Mm hmm. Um, I scared her. She actually tried to run. And that's what he said. Yeah, he shot her. Did you say how I did it or? He just shot her. In the head. Mm -hmm. Um, as to major detail? No. When he came out, did he have any blood or anything on him or did he have his gloves and his booties and all that shit or? Just his gloves. Okay. Did he go in with the backpack or? No. All right. What about the gun? Um, he uh, he had he had it, but it wasn't out now. Mm -hmm. He gets in. He throws it in the uh, in the backpack. There's no smell, no nothing. So again, I'm just thinking he's shooting the shit out of my life. So you never hear anything, you never smell anything. But it's the morning that she dies. Yes. Yeah. What time were you there approximately? I can't tell you that hundred percent sir. Okay. I wasn't watching the clock. Where do you go after you leave there? Uh we go back to the motel. And then uh, we go to Home Depot. What to do at the hotel? Uh, he goes and takes a shit from the restroom, and then um, he does some cocaine. He waits a little bit, and then we leave. What to do with the gun? Um, He 
He took uh, he took it apart. Okay, and then did what? He got rid of it. Where? Uh, in the dumps. At the motel? No. Where at? At the gas station up the street. What, what's the name of the gas station? I don't know. It's a little tiny gas station. So he takes part at the hotel and throws it in the dumpster at the gas station. Then y'all go to Home Depot. Yes. Okay, and what's he saying on the ride to Home Depot? Yes, we tells me about it. She, uh, uh, like, I can't believe her, uh, like, we're good, we're good, that the way that, and then things will be a lot better. Um, he's just smiling and giggling the whole time. And, uh, he's like, yeah, man, she she tried to run. And today, that's the, uh, me not talking for a while. He's like, hey, he's smiling, like, hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to work. And turns up the music, starts singing, jamming out all the way there. So they pull up, um, I get out the car and get right to work. She talked to Johnny more about it then or at the work site? Um, his mom was around most of the time. The only time I think they could talk was in the restroom. Right. Because I was, uh, you can't have me on time. I was looking for a girl I knew up there. And then I didn't find her. I had to go to the restroom. So I went to the restroom. And that's when I realized they were both were in there. And like, what were they saying? Uh, he was on his phone. I heard him talking on his phone. And John was speaking Greek. So I just, I took a piss. You could see the camera how long I was in the restroom. Right. And I got out. Okay. When he came out of the house, what else did he have with him? The, um, when he came out, that oh, I didn't see nothing with him. Okay. What about the hotel? Did you ever see anything else that he took out of the house? Uh, no, not until like at the job site. Uh, he he uh, pulls a a whole bunch of tools out of his pocket. Okay. And um, I think a, a, a necklace. What kind of necklace would it look like? So the screen, thank you, kind of thing. Have a cross on it or anything at the end of it? Or? Cause at first I was, I was picturing a, a necklace with like a little diamond on it. Mm-hmm. And I would say cross on that short. What do you do with the necklace? Uh, they say what he took out of the house. Um, he just took it out the necklace and the tubes. Okay. That's it. You ever say anything about any money he took out of the house? Or? I didn't, he didn't say nothing about that. Rodney were the ones that told me that. Okay. Do you ever say how much uh, John paid him for it? He was um, boasting about something about 15 grand. Okay. Did you ever see that cash? No. Did he, what did he pay you? <laughs> well, you gotta be honest. No. The money I had, all the money I've had for, that I got from him mm-hmm. was the money that John owed me for the work. Right. Did he give you anything else? Because I'll be honest, that's not what he's saying. And I want to corroborate this thing, you know. I did the math myself. He says he's gonna give me a grant. Mm-hmm. But when I did the math, counting the day I worked, that's how much John owed me. So the end of the day, you don't know, I'm getting shit out of it. Right. But he pays you a thousand saying that's for the driving. Right. Okay. What happens after the uh, police interviews and all that other stuff? Is he coming back talking to you or is John talking to you anymore? Or? Um, after the first interview, they told us not to talk to John. Right. So that that cut off, but I think he, I believe he has still had contact with John because the day he took me to talk to the lawyer, he had was driving Vance, John's van. Mm-hmm. <sighs> We're gonna continue. Can I use the restroom? Yeah. I want to see what you have. Can I take him to the bathroom? Can I take him to the bathroom? Is that right? Okay. Um, 
When you drove over there, you drove? Yes. Okay, and what car were you driving? Um, some great car. I don't have to hear it to make a model. You don't know whose car it was, or? It was a, it's just a car. Okay, but he's, that's a car he normally drives? No. Okay, so he shows up with a different car that day. Um, he has left a car at the motel. It's been sitting there. Okay, okay. And do you know who owns it, or? Um, he, well, originally he told me that he, he was trying to buy a car. Mm -hmm. So he uh, takes me to go look at the car. Because I do mechanic work. Mm -hmm. I check out the car, tires, everything. It's good. All right, we get we get the car, and um, that's when he tells me just the car for what we're, what's going to happen. Okay, he parks at the uh, hotel. He leaves it there. How long? Yeah, that thing was there, but. Like a week? Okay. Okay. Until that day. And then do you drive that car? Yes. Okay. And he tells you where to go. I mean, tells you what's going on, obviously. Okay. A um, couple things. All right. What I want to do is start writing. Okay. Have you said anything that kills you? No. I think you say things that help you quite a bit. I think you say things that the, the DA is going to appreciate. But when I start writing these things down, these are the things that I'm going to bring to her. In other words, I'm going to go to her and say, hey, this is a deal. Obviously, she knows about the case. She knows this interview is happening. She has a warrant. She knows everything else. And what I need to tell her needs to be the gospel truth. In other words, if you give me a statement, I don't care if you just lied to me a couple minutes ago about something. I don't care because I'm not going to tell her what you told me. I'm going to tell her what I'm fixing to write down. Okay, and that's the message. I'm like this courier and I deliver this okay this is what he is saying okay the important thing is, is if you lie about any of it then that's your credibility veracity right you're who you are and the significance to them so you jumped off the cliff right I mean boom you're free falling you're waiting for the ranger to hand you this parachute right but that parachute is going to have holes in it if there's lies. All right, so it's got to be the God's honest truth because if they come back later and catch you in a lie because of something that John says or something that Jesus says, then you know it doesn't help you. In other words, Jesus is squirming. You already know that. So I can't get into what he said. A lot of it's the same. A lot of it's some of it's different, the self-serving part, okay? So you need to be, I mean, boom, 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 boom. And if you got paid 3000 bucks or 4000 bucks, or if you knew about it two weeks in advance or three weeks in advance, it doesn't matter. You just need to tell the truth, okay? So right now you're free-falling, and the only one who can hurt you right now is you. And the only way that you can do that is to lie and not tell the whole truth. You took the leap of faith, but the leap of faith has got to be the gospel. I mean, it's got to be the God's honest truth because anything but the truth does you no good you know, it does not help you at all, then, you know, I go up there, okay, well, what did they say? Well, you know, in an hour, John's going to say this, and this is what, you know, he said earlier. Um, well, who's telling the truth? Well, you know, I'm not sure that James was being completely honest there. That doesn't help you. What I need to do is say, James said this, boom, 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 and this is the truth. You know, this is God's honest truth. Does it matter if, if he had you get rid of the gun? No, it doesn't matter. Does it matter if he had you get rid of um, what he was wearing or the backpack or uh, get rid of the car or that he gave you, you know, three or four or five thousand dollars? No, none of that matters. Okay. The only thing that matters about it is the truth. All right. So go back like we just never had that conversation and what I write down is what I'm going to bring to her. Can you understand the significance of that? But it's an all or nothing deal. In other words, you might think, well, I'm going to kind of smudge on this because it's going to save my ass a little bit, but it doesn't. You, you screw yourself over. Does that make sense? In other words, if you're not, you're not credible, then you're worthless. See what I'm saying? So if it's cool with you, I'm going to start writing now, but I'm going to start at the beginning kind of work through this thing chronologically in as much detail and everything else you don't remember then you know I don't remember but 
there's also legitimacy to things that you do and don't remember. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of shit that you're going to remember. You might not remember if it was raining that day or if it was 72 degrees, but, you know, you're going to remember a lot of other stuff, what he was wearing, exactly what happened with the gun, exactly when he started bringing this up and what he said about it, things that John said. You know, those are the, the things that are really important, okay? Do you understand that? In other words, I don't want that to be a waste of what we just did. I just want to move forward with complete and total legitimacy. And, and after this point, I'm here. I want to help you, you know? I, you know, that's my goal. I, I want you to, um, to help me. But those two things are reciprocal in that it only does good if I can bring the, the God's honest truth. So even if you think something's going to hurt you, you have to understand there's two other people, right? One that's confessed and one that's going to confess. And the, both of them are trying to avoid the death penalty. So, you know, they're going to, and I'm going to have that same talk with them about the truth, you know. So um, even if you think it's going to hurt you, you just got to be honest because if not, you get burned in the line and you're kind of worthless. I mean, that's just me being straight up with you. You don't want me to blow smoke up your ass, right? Okay. So you want me to, I'll start writing this down. And if... That's, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's Thanks, I already jumped off the cliff. Mm-hmm. Um... The car he has been looking for for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, he even asked me to look. But I didn't take it seriously to look. Just trying to try and find a car and everything. Tell you to look for a car so he could go kill John's wife. Right. Okay. He also had me looking for a van for him to continue working. He mm-hmm. was going to get a van to start going to the jobs by himself, but I mm-hmm. need John to come. Um, we could take a look, we look, finally they, um, to be honest, I can't remember if it was Rosalinda or him who found the car. Mm-hmm. But, um, I know I was the one that called the guy to, uh, to go look at the car. And Rosalinda knew why she was looking for that car, too. Did she? I'm asking you. Um, no. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know you tell me. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't to do that because she did. But to my knowledge, no, she didn't know anything about it, any of it. Okay. Um, so she finds the car, you park it there for a couple weeks until it's go day. When do you find out that it's go day? Um, he, um, he talks about doing it different days, different days. And um, he, he's like, yeah, uh, I'm gonna work on take care of this. Uh, uh, I want to catch it on a rainy day. On a rainy day, I'm like, okay, whatever. And again, if you want, sir, we can also verify. We have to verify what I'm telling you. I believe you. That's the truth. And um, so he he tells me. Um, The family church, all my facts straight, so I can get you. Exactly, the honor God is true. Beautiful. I, I, I feel uh, in my heart, honestly, that after this conversation, you may be, be my friend or might get back to the party and get caught out tonight to go to med court for one of those papers. I wouldn't worry about that right now. Um, so... He, he, he went down, I'm, I'm, I think the car was there for a week, but I know he, there was a time it was raining, he said, let's go. He, we, we, the car was around. Uh, but this is what maybe he did before this thing hit, to think it was bullshit. Because um, uh, the whole time, I don't, I don't know if he's actually going through this or he's just blowing smoke, so he, he said, let's go out there. Goes out there and he's like, drive up, drive up the, drive, drive up the block. Hey, we drive around the block, drive around the block. Um, man, there's a lot of people outside. 
And let's just go back to my town. Okay. I mean, I need, I need these bush names. All right. Now, how long before the murder was that? Um, a couple days, a week. I, I can't say about it. It was some, uh, some time before this. Okay. So he's already full shit. Okay. Yeah. And um, because uh, I'm, I'm thinking like. You know, if a person was actually going to do this, they don't care what. Right. Mm. But he says there's people around, so he's not going to do it that day. Yeah. Let's go. Go back. Not then. Uh, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. No. We'll do it tomorrow. No. We'll do it tomorrow. No. no. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really starting to trip out about it, but I'm not telling him this. Mm hmm. I'm just living like normally. It's a normal day. Yeah, you talk smoke, you talk smoke. Right, right. Just go to work, do this. Like, hey, let's take out after work. No, no. get your sleep. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I want to go stay in there. You're fucking working the same day. So, he doesn't try to hang out with me after work or anything like that. Um. <laughs> Then uh, finally the day comes up. Um, the the money, uh, as I'm trying to help me line up for your case. All right. Well, when does he talk about money for the first time? Um, first time he brought it up was. I think like the the thing that he was telling me about. Mm -hmm. Thing that he was telling me about. I think that would be the best thing he told me about the money. And um, towards the end, after you know, while the investigation is going on, I even there was even Dad asked him like, and I, I, I was like, so. Where's all this money you supposedly have? It's like, oh, I, I, I sent it off. It's it's gone. That was after the murder. Like, yeah, because supposedly he was he he his stories that he was getting money throughout the time and was blowing and spending it. Mm -hmm. But I, from remember the conversations between Russell and him having arguments. They were behind on the car note and other shit like that. So any other money yet? So that. Yeah. Well, what did he specifically say he was going to pay you for driving? A thousand. Okay. And when he reaches out to you at this three-week point to offer you a job, is he talking about the hit then, or is he just talking about coming to work? Well, we're talking about actual work. Okay, okay. So once you start working with him then, he broaches you about being a driver? I mean, what's he saying? Yeah, that's... Yeah, Tell me what he says. Um... Yeah, I got this job to do, and I need I need someone to drive. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, like right, yeah. So you want to make some money, and like, right, what are you talking about doing? I think that, uh, uh, I'm gonna go. I feel like driving because I'm running over shit this late. At the time, I don't know who she is. I don't know who John is. I'm just gonna shoot a lady. Yeah. You say what he was getting paid then or anything? Um, it wasn't, no, no it wasn't until later that I figured out how much he was Right. So he says, hey man, you want to earn a thousand bucks to drive me so I can shoot this lady? Okay, and when does he get into more detail? Um, he gets into more detail as he, he says he's trying to plan it uh, plan out. He wants it on a rainy day, he wants another vehicle. So I'm, I'm trying to take it. I am actually mm -hmm. tired. Um, as far as you know, Rosalinda finds that vehicle. And does she buy it or does he buy it? Uh, we buy it. Okay, you go with them. Where did you get the vehicle from? Um, some place in um, East Dallas. Okay. And where would happen to the vehicle now? Where's it at? Um, I don't know. 
Okay. Uh, it was uh, last dropped off at uh, one of the people, one of the mechanic shops that he knows. Mm -hmm. It was dropped off there. Where's the mechanic shop? Um, Loop 12 and Singleton. What was the name of the place? I don't know. Okay. A little like Mexican Hispanic shop? Okay. Yeah. All right. And he drops it off there, sells it to him, or has him cut it up, or? Just drops it off. All right. I think he was playing the seven. Okay. All right. He um, doesn't care. He just wants to make a uh, thousand dollar coffee or whatever. What uh, what clothes was he wearing the day that he did the murder? Um. <clears throat> uh, all black. Okay. Sweatshirt. Um, hoodie. Okay. Have anything written on it or no? Okay. What did he do with the clothes? Um. I know he got rid of it and. Um, I think that he threw them in the in the trash can at the job. Because mm -hmm. he didn't throw them in my dumpster. So he wore those same clothes to the Lowe's or he took them off at your uh, hotel? He, he changed clothes to the hotel. Okay. And then he put them in his backpack? Oh, or? Wait. Uh, he, clothes. Right. <clears throat> he changed I think he... Uh, yeah, he changed clothes to the motel. Okay. And then put the clothes in his backpack, or do you leave all that shit in your hotel? Um, I think he, uh, he kept everything in his backpack. Okay. Why does the backpack end up being back at your hotel? Uh, because that's where uh, he tossed me off at the end of the day. Okay, so then you just said they stick it in there? Yeah. Okay. So go back a little bit. So first he tells you, hey, uh, you want to help me with the job? I'm going to shoot this lady. And I'll give you a thousand dollars for it, but he doesn't go into a whole lot of detail. And then he says, "I'm going to go look for a car." And as he's planning this, it's going to be a rainy day. What else does he say? Um, that's uh, there. That's when he tells me, "Yeah, it's about John, uh, John's wife, and he's he's setting it up, you know that." And um, why is he setting it up? Why? Is, what's he saying? Uh, exactly what you said. Tell me. Um, he, he's not happy. He doesn't want to marry her. But he knows if he leaves her, she'll take the kids. Mm -hmm. And he wants to keep the kids. So he's going to kill her to keep the kids, basically? Yeah. Okay. And when exactly do you find out that it's John's wife? That's Laura. Um, I find out, um, like... When he starts going into detail about stuff. Okay, what is it? John said that it's his, his wife and that he's paying me to do this to keep the kids. He doesn't want to marry her. Um, and sorry. Um, and that. Uh, John's getting on to him because supposedly they're getting closer to the wedding day. Mm -hmm. And John has nothing ready. Mm -hmm. um, can, where, where, where are we at again, please? Um, so you're getting closer to the wedding day, so John wants it done. So is John getting on his ass saying, hey, let's, let's get going on this, or stop dragging your feet, let's yeah. do it? Do you ever hear John say that to him, or John talk about it beforehand? Um, yeah. What's he say? Uh, I knew the to fuck up. I haven't got a tuxedo yet. And John said that in front of you? Yes. Saying, hey, hey, Sushi, you need to hurry the fuck up and kill her, because I haven't got a tuxedo. He didn't say it that way. He just says, you need to hurry up and get this done. It's because I haven't got a suit. I'm not ready. I'm not doing anything for the wedding. You need to quit bullshitting. All right, so he's pushing him to get it done. John never say anything else to you about it, or in front of you about it. Um, yeah. John uh, tries to have a conversation with me about it. And I'm like, Dad, that's between you and Jesus. When, when did he try to have that conversation? Um, one day when he uh, t 
took me to the dump to dump off the, the trailer. Mm -hmm. That's where he starts talking to me. And, uh, um, when I stay working, even if I fire too soon, I get to the job. So I'm trying to make money, pay my information, stuff, and take care of my fees. Right. Um, and that's when he doesn't. Uh, that's when he's like, "Hey, he's been seeing full of shit, and he's been seeing like he's, uh, he, he doesn't want to do it." Um, Talking about the murder. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he hasn't gave him money. Uh, he's given him money already. Doesn't say how much. And um, that's what actually when I found out. Uh, you know what? That, that's when I found out how much exactly. So. You say you gave him how much? I asked him like, like, how much is he making up of this? Like, really? Fifteen thousand. So John said that he was going to pay Jesus, or he paid Jesus fifteen thousand to kill his wife. Yeah. Okay. And that's what, a week before the murder, a couple days before, or? Yeah. Okay. And what do you say to that? Where does the conversation go? Uh, and so, um, uh, he's like, uh, we've been playing this for so long. Um, he, he's, he hasn't done it. He doesn't think he's actually going to do it. Um, he asked me if uh, if, uh, if we're going to actually get it done. I tell him, you got to talk to Seuss again. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I think he's a dumbass and he's actually done my good things. And uh, John mentioned something about his, uh, about John has military experience. Right, yeah. And he, he served something in his country. Yeah. And this is how you do things. How do you do things? What's he say? Um, you, when you set up, when you make a deal with someone, you get, you get it done. You know, right? Drag it out, I guess. And um, Um, I mean, keep going, please, because um, I, I want to help you. Right. I'm talking about I mean, what else is okay. going on? So he has, says he has military experience. Does he say that he ever killed anyone before or ever had anyone killed before? Or? No, uh, but uh, he does ask me. He does ask me, um, would I do a job for 15 grand? And I'm like... Uh, so he asked you if you would kill his wife for 15 grand. No, right? he's, he's talking about his other wife. Oh, he wants his other wife dead too. Does he tell me exactly what he says about that? Uh, they, uh, they, so he wants his sister to do the to another job. Yeah. And this and that, and um, um I'm I'm just in I was like. Well, uh, you know, he says that yeah, I want I have another job for us to do, but he can't seem to get this one done. I think I'm wasting money, and I think I need to find someone else, and this and that, and then that's when he asked me, and I'm like, so is he asked you to kill Laura? No. He asked you if you do the other job. Yes. Okay. And I said no. Did he say why he wanted her dead? I think he said because he was a bitch or something. Did he say where she lived or? I know it was somewhere out of state. I can't remember exactly. Okay. For some reason, I'm thinking Atlanta. Okay. I don't know if I'm right. So he basically asked you for 15 grand, would you kill my wife in Atlanta? Because Jesus hadn't even done this shit yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. But suppose like Jesus was going to be doing this, that one next. Okay, he was doing the next one, too. Um, he's, he's trying to uh, convince me to say yeah or do it because he's like, I got the money. I got the money right here in, 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 in the side. Yeah. 15 grand right here. Mm -hmm. As you can tell by the flipping the picture. Mm -hmm. Not your deal. No. I mean, the fact that I'm actually saying that I'm going to drive is just because I think you're full of 
shit. <laughs> right. But right. um, I've known it's just to actually pull pranks like this. Like, he'll talk so much shit and it just comes up to nothing. Right. You ever known Hunter's Ace just kill anyone before? No. Just kind of full of shit. Yeah. Talks a big game. Yeah. Like, he's super cool. Yeah. Kind of like why he's in trouble in here right now for saying he's a member of a gang that he's not. He's full of shit. That's why he's in trouble. That's why he's reaching. He's just a bitch. You know, um, I, I actually, when I went to ISF, it was a little bit of an eye opener because it was, um, basically, I could say, like, it was mini prison. Mm -hmm. It gave you a taste of what real prison was like. Mm -hmm. And in there, the door I was in was actually controlled by gangs. Mm -hmm. They had uh, Mexican Mafia in there, they had Texas Syndicate, they had Tango, they had uh, Bloods, they had um, Peckerwoods. Has Jose or uh, Jesus ever told you that he was in a gang? Not, not originally. I mean, he. You know what? No, he did say it. What did he say he was in? Yeah, uh, he was a uh, he was in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm in there. Um, I got a uh, boss mate. Uh, uh, I'm a captain. And this and that. And again, was all bullshit. Probably why he's <laughs> why he's worried on this deal. He's more worried about staying in here because he got caught running his mouth saying he was a member of something that he wasn't. That's his motivation to talk, probably more so than the evidence against him. Yeah, because apparently in here, um, someone that I was talking to was telling me about prison life and this and that, and um, they, had a, they, they were talking about another guy who was saying he was in a gang, and then he, he said, no, if he takes that shit to TDC and go in there and tell them that, you could say that to whoever you want. They're going to send out something to whoever, and they're going to send back saying, oh, uh, you got to get certain names and other shit. Mm -hmm. And if it comes out, you're full of shit, then you're in some shit. Mm -hmm. Where are your boys at right now? Did So what about when... Um, when they said that on the phone about uh, that they were worried you were talking, did they come talk to you afterwards? Yeah. And what did they say then? Um, I, I the, when I left, Roulette, I didn't have no con no contact with him because, you know, I'm I'm still like, I can't tell this is happening. I didn't contact him. I didn't call him. It wasn't until the next day that. I talked to him and I was like, why didn't you call me since you get out? I was like, man. And what did he say then? And he was like, where are you at? Like, I'm at the motel. And he's like, oh, uh, me, you know, me, I want to talk to you. And, and he's telling me, come on in and get the bus and come over here. And I'm over here at, um, what the hell's her name? Uh, Rosalinda? No. Uh, the other one. Yeah, the whole girl. Uh, that's her uh, co-girl's name, the one she was living with. She moved to Yeah. Yeah, I can't think about it. I don't know. That's where he was. Okay. Did you go over there and see him then, or? No, uh, um, I was, he told me, like, come on, uh, uh, still, we'll, we'll talk everything, and, uh, I'll take you to a lawyer, and, Make sure your probation doesn't get messed up, and this and that. And that's really was that was accepted. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll talk to the lawyer. All right. Um. So we go. I, I go down there. We get there uh, as soon as we get in the car. He takes. What is the Rosalinda back to the uh, uh, apartment, and then he takes me to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. And they, he, he has a conversation with the lawyer, and 
and he's like, so what's going on? Uh, what did they, what did they find? And this and that. And I'm like, they caught me down there asking me these questions, and uh, they found the backpack in my room, and this and that. And, and he, he's 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 asking the lawyer like, so what what do you think they can do? Is that enough to indict me or do this and that? And I'm like, so he's sitting in the lawyer with you. Yeah. I thought we went there for me to talk to the lawyer. So does the lawyer know that he murdered Laura? Um, hypothetically. Okay. Who's the lawyer? Um, uh, he, I, could, I could take you straight to his office. Okay. I can't take you. Where, exactly. Where's the office at? Oh, they're off of um, 183. Lopez, I think that was Connor. Yeah. Okay. Is it a Hispanic attorney or? It's a white guy. Okay. So this attorney who's supposed to be representing you on your probation, as you're sitting there, come to find out that Jesus said that he killed Laura. No. He and just said that. Okay. He's just trying to make sure that they don't have a case against him for Laura. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And is that enough to give me in trouble? And um. One of the things uh, the lawyer tells him is that, um, uh, is that he keeps asking him, like, is that, is that enough to uh, um, to raise any questioning or anything like that? He's like, or says, I'm not sure. But it, it's kind of like he doesn't say it, but it's kind of like that read between the lines things. Right. Like, um, you can come talk to me, but it'd be better if I'm not there. Right. You talk to me. Right. So Laura's trying to do the right thing and kind of separate y'all, basically. Or it's better for Jesus to admit the murder to the attorney one on one and not you sitting in the room. Um, it's no, 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 it's better if you're gonna come ask me a question if I'm just not around for you to ask me a question. Uh, so the attorney doesn't want to know the truth. No, that's to what he said. Oh, okay, okay, that's what Jesus said. No. The attorney said? Yeah. I don't get it. So what's the attorney mean? Read between the lines. Yeah, I'm still not, I mean, I know I'm out in left field on this one, but I'm... If, it, it, like this investigation is going on, if, you, if you're going to go, if you're going to arrest me on mm -hmm. charge and interrogate me and stuff and that, it's better for me not to be around for you to ask me these questions. So he needs to take off. That, that's basically what the lawyer's trying to tell him. And then he takes off to Houston. That's what I mean? I think so. Did, um, so when you leave there, what else does, does he say? He can't go to Mexico, he's not real. You know, he's running his mouth, he can't go down there, they'll kill his ass. They don't have no custody. Who? Yeah, he is. Sitting right here in this jail. He's in the same uh, uh, tower as you. But you say Houston, or that says Florida. No, okay, I take that back. It is Florida. Did you go to Houston? Huh. No, I don't know. I mean, I know that he was arrested and brought back here, and he's here right now. Since you're going to call me. No, 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 you already passed that, but I don't want you to think that you're, uh, that I'm lying to you. And you're right, it was, uh, it was Florida.
I don't want you to think that I'm blowing smoke so I'm going to find this and show it to you. Conversations from here. You haven't talked to him since he's been here. I haven't had contact with him since I mean, we left the court. I mean, to the judge. I mean, the, the lawyer. He's been here for a while. Since we left, I have left that lawyer's office. I have had no contact with him. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the line over there. I'm looking for him. Okay. On 4-15-16, uh, they were notified that he was booked into the Dallas County Jail by the fugitive unit, and uh, so he's been here for two months, since the 15th. Marshals arrested him in Florida. <clears throat> they had information that he was in Mexico. that he ever went there. Either that or he was talking shit and he had to come back. because I did a press release looking for Trevino. Um, I don't see any of this on there. All over the place. says that he fled to um, Mexico initially and then they did the press release and uh, <clears throat> he didn't know he was here when, uh, when they, after I got arrested the next day is when they told me he was here. Uh, approximately 4 p.m. Central Time, Detective Sawyer was notified by Dill Beck that Jesus Trevino had been taken into custody by U.S. Marshals in Florida. Trevino was found working in a vacant house and he was searched. A hidden handcuff was located in his belt. So you're correct. I work a lot of these cases and sometimes I confuse the facts. But I always think that I'm lying to you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. My head is only so big. So, him running off to Florida to me doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, but so, so after you go to the attorney, then you don't talk to him anymore about it. What about John anymore after that? 
He just stopped working. I stopped, time, you know, I, seeing I stopped talking to John when they, uh, when I told me to stop talking to him. Okay. Jesus was going to keep in contact with him. Was Jesus still trying to reach out to you, or? Um, he was talking, we, were, we, were, we weren't talking to John, we were still working. Mm -hmm. Was he saying anything about the whole thing when you were working? Um, don't, don't worry. Like, there's, there's nothing going to happen. Nobody's going to say anything. Um, you're okay. Because the, the, the whole time, this is like, it's really bothering me. Mm -hmm. It's not your thing. It, it went from, I thought he was bullshitting to now. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See my language. Um, and when does he give you the thousand bucks? The, that same morning at the, at the job. Okay. I'm going to get to... Um, he gives you grand. Uh, no, we'll get, but we we'll won't get to... The house we're working at. Right. The, uh, the fireman's house. Right. And what's it in? Tens, twenties? Hundreds. So it gives you a thousand dollars, ten hundred dollar bills, basically. Okay. And so that's for driving. Yeah. Okay. And did you ask him about how much he got paid or what was up with that or why am I only getting a thousand or? Um. I told him, like, I asked him you know, how much you, he uh, he made, and I was like, really? And then he, he then she was like, yeah, I, I, I fucked it all off. How much did he say he got? Um, no, he never, he never admitted to how much he, I told him how much he made. You told him, John told me you got 15 for it, and did he deny it, or did he say anything, or just said? Uh, he sent it all the way, that supposedly he sent it to a church to pray for him. In Mexico. Mm -hmm. Do you feel bad about it at all or not? No, he's laughing, listening to music, and doing cocaine shit afterwards. And what about the gun? Did he tell me for sure what he does with the gun? Because there's a little contradiction there. Um, he takes it apart. It's in a black bag. He pulls it to the gas station. He's like, here, the the, in the dumpster. And I, I threw it in the dumpster. Okay. What kind of gun was it? You told me. Yeah, honestly, I wasn't sure. All I know was it was a black gun. Okay. Semi-automatic or revolver? Yeah, it was the clip. Okay. Was it small or big? I didn't hold it. I didn't actually see the... Wait. Okay. Hey, that big? Okay. Did you see what brand it was? Uh -huh. You ever say what caliber it was? Uh -huh. Say where he got it? Uh -huh. Never. Uh -huh. You say John gave him the gun. No. He didn't say it, but John was aware of it. How do you know that? Um. Because um, Russell Linda knew about the gun, and they uh, they left it at my at my uh, motel room one time, but before the murder. Yeah. yeah. He laid, uh, but he took it back with him because they, they ended up in his car and then they ended up in John's truck and John had it and John got mad at Jesus because it was in his truck and... So John actually had the gun for a little bit and then gave it back to Jesus? Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically he just leaves it in the work truck and John finds it and he's like, dude, you know what the hell are you doing leaving the gun that you're going to kill my wife in the truck for? And gives it back to him. No, um, it was in the car and he tells me to put it in the, in the truck. John told you to put it in the truck? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you put it in the truck? Because they, the they, keep, they keep switching cars. So I, John, he'll drive John's truck and then just drive the, the Lincoln or 
Then the car beat there, and John will take off in the Lincoln. So you put the gun in the truck, and then how does John find it? What happens? Um, we worked, and we actually forgot about it. Mm-hmm. And then that's when he remembers, and I was like, it's in John's truck. That's where he tried to put it. I put it in John's truck. So he tells John, so, just, so it doesn't just get found or whatever. And um, Where'd you put it in the truck? I just threw it in the seat. Driver or passenger? Passenger. Okay. You stood underneath that and then John got it out and gave it back to... I don't know when he gave it back. I don't know. I wasn't there for the commission exchange for the return. But John gave it back to Jesus? Yeah. Okay. Did John ever say, hey man, make sure you use certain caliber or certain type of bullets or... Don't screw it up by using 22 or the hollow points or pull out nothing. Okay. No. Did you ever hear them planning out exactly how it was going to happen? Uh, mm-hmm. He just he gave money to do this, do it. Okay. Did uh, uh, Jesus ever tell you how, how he got in the house and what he did? Um... No, he didn't tell me how he got in the house. Um, I figured that out later on because I noticed that when we went to his house, that his front door is a uh, key code. Yeah, yeah, key code entry. So I just press that to get in. Okay, but he didn't tell you that. You just figured that out on your own. Yeah, I figured it out. Okay. Um. Then, like I said later on, that's when I figured out he took stuff. Uh, otherwise, he went in. He scared her. She tried to run. That's what he told me. Okay. Did you say he grabbed her or touched her or just she tried to run? And and bam. Did you say how many shots he fired or anything? No. Or say he got blood on him or anything? No. Did you see the gloves when he went in? Um, and here he had the gloves on. In the car he had the gloves on? Mm-hmm. Did he take him off in the car, or were they already off when he came out? I believe he had them on the whole time. Okay. What did he do with the gloves? Um, threw them away. You know where? Or? I'm not 100 percent because I don't know if he, he threw it out the window or if he threw it in, in the backpack with all his stuff and threw it away when he got to the, the job site. Mm-hmm. Um, Let me go back and start working through this a little bit. So, I want to buy, if you found it, you can scratch piece of paper. Okay. Something that you need for, we can just, I want to make sure we get all this right for you, because like I said, you want credibility, and I want to give you the honest truth, and I want to make sure I get all these points done. Okay, well, let me scratch this, and then I'll go to another page. Um, so, about three weeks before the murder, Jesus, do you know his last name? Okay, so he reaches out to you, you knew him when you were a kid, but you hadn't heard from him for a couple of years, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he reaches out to you for a job, okay, working for John, doing construction. Okay, and, but he doesn't say anything right away about the murder. Mm-hmm. And, um, our pilots, and originally our first conversation was just to get just friends. I had been a long time. Right. And there was no conversation. It was later on that uh, the job came up about John. Okay. About working, working for him, actually doing construction work. Right. Okay. And so how long after you start doing construction does before Jesus starts talking about this? Um... Person, um, sure, I'm down to hang out. Uh, Where do you meet to talk to him?
Actually, you know, I believe it's uh, it was like two days before I actually started working for him because. <coughs> I remember seeing him in person. Okay. Um, and where do you see him at? I'm going to put down two days prior to working in person. Now, is that the one you're going to use? Or is that it's just scratch. Okay. Can you write that on there? What? Scratch. I think this is a... Um, I'm sorry. I'm, so I'm still... No, you're right. So two days prior to even going to work for him, he wants to meet in person, so you do it. Uh, where do you meet him at? He goes to my uh, motel. Okay. Hey, Seuss comes to your hotel. I was going to tell I click the finger out. Jesse starts telling me, uh, yeah, he gets a job. And what does he say about the job? I mean, what's... He just needs someone to drive. And what does he say the job is? Nothing yet. He just okay. needs someone to drive. Okay. And what's he say? what else does he say? Um... You make a grand out of it, um... Yeah, I can't. That's what I was In the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like a day later or something he took. Uh, there. I mean, he just tells me he's a driver. He doesn't explain, the rest, doesn't explain it too much. Okay, but he's going to be $1,000. He's got a job and he just needs a driver. Okay. Then later on, he, he says that um, uh, this guy's going to hire him to um, to kill his wife. And um, the way he says it, that's what makes you think that he's, he's full of shit. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't until I went to work with them that the first day on Tuesday that he tells me that... Uh, John's the guy. Okay. Hey. John's the guy whose wife you're gonna, uh, he's going to kill. And to, like, th telling John that I was the, was going to be his driver or something to secure me more about getting a job with them. Okay. So it basically tells John, hey, this dude, James, is going to be the driver when I go kill your wife, so we need to give him a job. No, the first is the job, but then later on, that's when he tells him. Okay, but when he's talking to John on the first day of work that Tuesday... The, the conversation between him and John, I, I don't hear, because I, when I worked for him once, I, I worked for him that first day, and that's uh, when the day ends... Uh, I asked him, because like, he going to want me to come back tomorrow, and he's like, I don't know, he's like... Uh, I'm just asking because if he does, uh, uh, no, I think uh, Sus told me that, that he, yeah, he likes the way you work here. Come back tomorrow. I was like, well, if you got to explain to him, he wants to come back tomorrow, he, I need a real job. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, let me go talk to him. He walks off, and I'm, st I'm staying next to the car. And I don't know if it's real, if it's real that's with us or not. And then that's when he comes back and tells me, quit your other job, you got a job. So I don't know what. He tells John or anything. Him and John have a lot of conversations that I'm not a part of. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does he does he say then that he told John that you were going to drive, or was that just kind of assumed? Um, I I think he told him because. Uh, I know I, I one for a time remember John telling me, um, I know you're just a driver. Okay, when did John say that? I can't, I can't put a time date on it. I'm sorry about that. Okay, and how did that, what was the context of that conversation? I think he was complaining about 
um, Jesus. In what way? Is it the same day he was telling me all that other crap? When you're jumping off the junk? Yeah. Because otherwise, me and John really do. Okay. So, uh, before the murder, though, you're talking about some time. It's you're with John in the trailer, and John tells you or asks you that day, hey, is, is Jesus ever going to do this? Is that when you have that conversation? Yeah. Okay, so it's at the junk pile with the trailer. Okay, and what exactly does does John say to you that day? Um, I was, uh, um, he takes me to the the dump. Mm-hmm. Where's that at? <clears throat> <clears throat> Take me to the dump, and um, he t- he's showing me all. He's like, I'm going to show you something, and he teaches me how he drives this way and that way, and all through here up to up to Wiley, up to another Home Depot up there, and he's driving around, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, cool, uh huh, yeah, like, oh, you made that time, but. I'm not going to remember all these damn rules. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Stuff like that. Um, so during that drive or when you're there. And then right that's why he's t- he, and he starts telling me about that and this and that. And, uh, oh, what's that the day that you fucking said that? What was it? Go ahead, I'm listening. Tell me what? Um, uh, I stopped that uh, you and John had the trailer and you're at the dump. Yeah, and when we leave the dump is when he starts, he says, says that stuff. Okay, and what's he say? Tell me again. Um, He's going to do it. It's taking forever. So he asks, is Jesus actually going to do it? And then he says that it's taking forever. And he's talking about killing his wife. Okay, and what else does he say? That's what he asked me if I would stay, if I would, I would continue working with Marlene with him, even if I, he fires the suits, because the suits are full of shit. And I'm like, that's what I, I, I kind of tell him, like, I don't believe anything. Any of this is actually. Right. So you basically say that I don't think Casey is going to kill your wife. Just, this is just. Uh, I don't say it like that, but I give off the hint, like, this is just. You gotta just blow it small, man. None of this is really gonna happen, so I'm, I'm just amusing your... Right. ...your bullshit. <laughs> and, and what's he say after that? Is that when he asks you if you would do it? Uh, 
He doesn't. He doesn't ask you for this one. Okay. Well, what's he say about the other one? Or do you you said something about you asked him how much he was paying? Yeah. And how'd that go? Um. Yeah. How much you paying? I don't tell him. Fifteen grand. Okay, so John says he's paying Jesus 15 grand to kill his wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that when he says, would you, would you do a hit for 15? Yeah. And that's for his other wife. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, anything else to transpire in that conversation? Um. Kind of floundering on me, man. What's wrong? Hmm? You're kind of floundering on me a little bit. What's wrong? I'm, I'm trying to uh, think on a little bit. Okay. I'm, trying, I'm trying to shake everything in the room. Okay. You gotta remember, I'm tired and, I, and I, I've been up since we, we eat breakfast at 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, I have no idea what time it is right now. I, I've got to go arrest him. Okay. So let's knock through this real quick and then I'll come back tonight or tomorrow. I mean, I'm going to you know, lock you into the statement. I mean, if it changes, I just want an honest statement. But then you know, John's going to turn around and say whatever, but you've already given me the statement. That's the significance of this right now. Okay. Um, I mean, if we stop earlier and I go arrest John and John confesses and gives up the whole thing, then obviously there's no reason for me to talk to you again. But since you're helping us, then, you know, I want to get the whole story. But, uh, well, let's go back. <clears throat> so... He says he has a job for you two days before you start working the construction deal. He's going to pay a thousand to be a driver, and he's going to kill uh, a lady. Mm -hmm. And then the first day of work, he tells you that's whose wife I'm going to kill, John's wife. Is that right? And then a little bit later, um, this hasn't happened, and you and John are out at the dump, and John, you guys are basically talking back and forth about, hey, is he ever going to do this? You know, and John tells you that he paid him 15000 to kill his wife, basically. Or maybe not in those exact words, but that's the understanding. Yes. Okay. And then um, and then he asks you, hey, would you, you know, since Jesus, he's supposed to do this other murder, kill my other wife, uh, and he's not doing it, would you would you do a hit for fifteen k? Uh, first, he said that he has another one for Jesus. Okay. But he doesn't think Jesus is going to do it because Jesus hasn't done this one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, how does that go after that? Um. What I wrote is, has another murder for Jesus, thinks that he's not going to do it. Because he hasn't killed Laura yet. Right. Okay. Um, and then um, that's when he keeps driving around this way and that way, telling me of, 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 uh, of directions you can leave when you leave there, mm -hmm. and different uh, things like that. Okay, shows different routes. All right, then what? Then we uh, go back to the job. When does he say, ask you if, if you do a hit for 15? When, um, during, during the time, somewhere, somewhere while he's driving around, all I know is that <clears throat> we just passed by, by the dump. We're going. Okay, so basically what he says is, I've got another murder for Jesus, but I don't think that he's going to do it because he hasn't killed Lori yet. Would you be interested in, in killing my ex-wife for 15K? Right. I say no. Okay. But as far as you knew, Jesus was going to kill both. Yeah. Did Jesus ever tell you that? 
No. Okay. So you guys go back to the job site and anything else happen? Any other conversation? Um, the, uh, when it says job site, they, they're usually just talking about work. Um, the uh, thing about them doing this was like every so often. Okay. And, like something they talked about 24-7 all the time. So we're like two weeks out or a week out, and prior to that, do you hear John saying anything directly to Jesus about the murder? Um, And I, I, I can remember him saying something about kill her and your boot and your bush into Seuss. And to, to where and when exactly. Okay, I think uh, when I can't give exactly when, when but uh, I believe we were at that same house that we were working on Moss Creek. Was it Moss Creek right now? Yeah, I think so. The fireman do? Yeah. Okay. So John jumps Jesus' ass and he's like, when are you going to do it? Because I, I never knew about the years and all that shit. Right. But when, so at the Moss Creek house, I mean, is that what John does? Is he jumps Jesus' ass and asks, when are you going to do it? Are you going to do this? Or how does that conversation go? Tell me what he says. What's John say? We're going up the truck. Uh... Yeah, you, you you don't get nothing done. You just keep bullshitting. It's taking forever. We're getting closer to the, the the wedding day. I haven't got nothing ready. I don't have a uh, suit, uh, tuxedo. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, my mom's coming. Uh, I think he, wanted to, he was trying to get it done before his mom showed up. Okay. I've got a tuxedo. I haven't done anything. My mom's coming. Then what's he say? Um, <clears throat> you need to hurry the fuck up. Okay. And does he say specifically to kill my wife? That's that's the one problem we're running into because we already know what, we're, what he's talking about. Okay, but during this conversation, you know that when John says you need to hurry the fuck up, you know that he's talking about killing Laura. Yes. Okay. In other words, they're not talking about the stucco job on the back porch. No. They're not talking about painting the steps. Right. They're talking about killing Laura. Okay. Uh, and what about anything else that John says up front? Um... Jesus tells him he wants to do when it's raining. John tells him that it um, doesn't matter what the weather is. Um, your neighbors are always outside. Um,
Did John ever say, you know, I want you to do it early in the morning? Or I want you to do it after I give you a signal or make a phone call or send you a text or anything like that? In other words, how was it decided on that you guys do it in the morning after she drops off the kids? I think that that's why they, they decided that because the kids were gone and she was alone at the house. Okay. What said in that conversation? They had that. They had that set up way. Okay, so that's way for me. Okay, so coming up on this, how many dry runs do you make in which he comes to get you and you go out there? Three. Okay, is that the same week that that she gets killed, or no, or a different week? Uh, a different week. Okay, the week before, or what? Um. I wish my heart was being very close to better right now. Um, I mean, is it pretty close to the murder date? The week before, I believe. Within the week before to when it actually happened. Okay. And every time, why didn't he do it on those days? Um, neighbors. So someone was out. Yeah. Okay. And every time, did he pick you up at the same place, and did he have the same car there? Um, yeah. Okay. And tell me about this car that he has parked at your uh, motel for, what, two weeks? It's a great car. Okay. Sedan? Two-door, four-door? Four. You don't know what kind? No. And when did he park it at the hotel? At the motel? The day after he got it. Because he said he couldn't take it home. Okay, so two weeks before the murder? Three weeks before the murder? Say two weeks. Okay, and he specifically got that car for the murder. Mm -hmm. And he told you that? Yeah. What did he say? I need a car, any kind of piece of shit car, it doesn't matter. If it just does this, that's all, all I need it for. And what's this? We have to do the job. Okay. And the job is the murder? Yes. Okay. And he, when does he explain to you that this is going to happen early in the morning and this is how it's going to go down? What's he say? Um... Let's go. Get ready. Let's go. I mean, but did he tell you in advance that it's going to be early in the morning, or did he say, what did he say? Yeah, they, they already had a pre-range that it's always going to be, it's going to be sometime in the morning. Okay, and what did, uh, who told you that, John or, or Jesus? Um, a bit of both. Jesus and John. And what did they say? Um, it's supposed to be done after, after she drops off the kids. Okay. Did Jesus ever talk about like a text that he would get from John knowing today was the day or anything like that? No, he would just tell, uh, John would just tell him when he leaves. Okay. So the day of the murder, any clue what time Jesus shows up at your motel? Well, I don't want you. Yeah, I try not to. <laughs> it's like it's right there. Yeah, from from your memory though. Can you just give me an estimate. Um, it's about seven thirty. Okay, and what does he say when he gets there? Um. Well, I think he. Uh, I don't think he's there at that time. Mm -hmm. He just tells me to get, uh... He calls you? He tells me to get up and get ready. And that is the, you know that you're going to go do this murder that day? Yeah, but, uh, I'm... Like, I, I, and, uh, at that point I was being honest about I didn't, I don't, I didn't just get up and get ready. I just pulled over, yeah, whatever. 
Okay. So you go back to bed. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Okay. What time does he knock on your door? Um. Shit. Uh, maybe seven between damn man because it's seven thirty. I, I, I know it has better be before eight o'clock. Okay, so before eight, he knocks at the door, and what's he say? Uh, you're not ready. Okay, and then what happens? I get dressed. Okay, then what happens? Um. Uh, we go. We get in the car. You get in this gray car, and you're driving? Yes. Okay. And what's he wearing then? All black. And it was a hoodie? Yes. Okay, and wh- what's he saying? Is he directing you how to get there? You already know how to get there, or is he saying anything about what's going to happen? Or? Um, all right, and, and I already know how to get there. Um, Uh, I don't know we, can, we can get this shit actually done. Me, um, I turn around, I'm smoking a cigarette. We get o- over there and, um, he has me drop him off and I drop him off. Tell me where you drop him off. Right in front of the house. You drop him off right in front of the house? Okay, then what happens? I'm supposed to park uh, on the other block and where T comes out. Where's the other block? Um, block across from the house. Okay. On the same block or another yeah, street down? Same block. Same block, but you're just across the street. Like in front of the house or farther down? Like, no, this is the block, this street, this block. Same block. Okay, so you're down, you're down like, okay, so you're down about half a block or a block. Okay, so you, so you do that. And how long is he gone? Does he have on the blue gloves then? Um, yeah. When he got out of the car, yeah. Did you see the gun then? Um,. I started f- uh, fidgeting with it in uh, the backpack and then put it in his sweater to that night. Okay. So he's like checking to make sure rounds in it. Okay. So do you go? Do you see him enter the house? No. Do you know the address? No. But you know for sure it's John's house. Yes. Okay. Um, and then what happens? I drive off, um, I go around the block, I park over there, I'm smoking cigarettes and everything, and I'm supposed to uh, pull up whenever I see him walk up, but uh, I really wasn't paying attention, and by the time I know it, uh, he's standing standing out in front of the house. Okay, so you see him in front of the house, and then what happens? He gets in the car and... So you drive to pick him up? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what's he say when he gets in the car? Let's go. Okay, anything else? Not really. Do you, do you just kind of quiet right there, there. You can do it more. Looking, looking around. around. Look around. Do you see the gun or do you see the blue gloves? I don't see the gun. It's an incident there. Okay. And I start driving, but I know he does pull it out, but I'm not paying attention because I'm, I'm just So at some point afterwards, he pulls out the gun. You just don't know when. Yeah, and he puts, he puts it in there. And as I'm driving, that's when I, um, I hear him dismantling it. So he dismantles it and puts it in the backpack. Mm-hmm. That black backpack. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about his shirt and all that other stuff? Um... Do you still wear it? No. Uh, I take it all off and stuff in the backpack. Okay, just a sweatshirt or? Um, yeah, so he takes off the hoodie, leaves a regular shirt on, takes off the pants, the shoes. What shoes was he wearing? Uh, it'll be a Converse, I think. Okay. And he puts them all in the backpack. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The Converse, he throws out the window. Eventually, when we're, when we're driving, he throws it out the window. Where was that at? 
um, one of the little streets around their house, around their neighborhood. How far away do you think? That's really important, so I want you to think hard about that. Okay. So and he just takes them off and throws them out into a ditch or throws one out and throws the other one out. How far apart? I can't, I can't say for sure. I'd probably five or seven blocks or maybe more than that. Do you know what road you're on when he does it? No, sir. Okay, and do you know what color shoes it were? Um, black. High tops, court shoes. And now we're, we're close to this, to the lake, uh, so I can tell you. Okay, so near the lake, did he throw them in the lake? Um, and no, uh, they didn't reach the water, I know that for a fact. Okay, but they're kind of by the lake? They were pretty close to the lake, but I just don't know how close, but we're close towards the, the street stairs near the side of the lake. Okay, so he tosses one, and then he waits a couple blocks and he tosses the other. Is he saying anything while he's doing it? Uh, Where's he getting his other shoes from? Um, here he has them. What do you mean? Uh, here he had his, uh, here he had, he had his, his boots with them. In the car already? Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you're driving, does he throw anything else out of the car as you're driving? Uh -huh. Okay. So then where do you get, well, what's he saying now? Anything or not? Um, during that time, he's not saying anything. Okay, he's just taking care of business, taking apart the gun, putting in the backpack, puts a sweatshirt in the backpack, takes the shoes off and tosses them out. Takes okay. his pants off and puts them in the backpack too. Okay, okay. Okay, then where do you go? To your apartment. Okay, the motel? Yes. Okay, and what happens when you get there? In the Lincoln. Okay. Does he go inside at all? Yes. He went to use the restroom. So he actually takes it down? Yes. Does he say anything? He's smiling like, oh, yeah. Okay. And he did cocaine in there, or? Yes. Okay, and is he talking about the murder? Are you asking him any questions, or? Um, not at that point, no, he's just more like, he's, I guess he's comprehending what he just did, and he's laughing, having a good time about it, uh, saying the mean shit, I'm, I'm watching TV, and then, the, we see, uh, then he, um, he takes off, uh, we get ready to leave. Yeah, we do. We do. We can uh, link it and go. Okay, and then what happens? Um, we go to uh, we go up the street, get rid of the gun, and then we go to Home Depot. Okay, and so he gives you the gun, and what kind of bag is the gun in? It's a black plastic bag. And what? How far up the street? A lot of that. And do you know what kind of gas station it was? Uh. It's like a little mini mart gas station. Okay, and he hands you the gun. Hands me the bag. Okay, and he tells you to throw it in the dumpster. Or yes. Where do you throw it? Is it a garbage can or is it a dumpster? It's a dumpster. At this mini mart. Okay, so then what happens? You know, be completely honest with you to, uh, for, for this part. I didn't know it was the gun until he handed me the bag and by you the, could oh, okay shake and you could tell by, by, by the way and oh, okay. that's what you handed me. Okay, okay. Um, and what about the rest of his clothes? What to do with those? I, I told you I think he throws that away on Moss Creek. Okay, so we the black pants and the sweat. Okay. And where does he throw those on Moss Creek at the job site? Yeah, and then the trash can. Are you sure about the shoes? Yes. 
positive. I mean, no freaking doubt in your mind that he tosses these shoes out near the lake. Yes. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. And you're sure that they're black converse? Yes. Okay. And they're a size smaller than what, than what he can wear. Okay. And I remember him complaining about how, how tight they are. Okay. And he, he could comment as them being like girls' shoes. Okay. Do you see any blood or anything on them? No. Okay. Um, so after you dump off the gun, you didn't know it was going to time, but you put it in the trash can, and then you guys go to um, Home Depot? Yes. Okay, and what's he saying? Um, I'm assuming now he screwed up on Coke. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I said he was singing on the right way to Home Depot. Got the radio cranked up loud. Um, he gets out. Um, uh, um, I think um, this. Is this the, the, the no? Here's thirty. Where this is this over the on the ski point thingy? See, I'm not familiar with this area, so the no, the, the, the blip in the morning. The blip in the morning. I don't yeah. Know what I mean, when he's driving from the the house in Rowlett. Yeah. That's it. I don't know what you're talking about. When he leaves. Right. He goes up towards Wiley. After the murder. Yeah. And then he goes. 30. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. He leaves and he goes uh, to the motel after the murder. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not from around here, so I don't know. All the... This is this is him calling John though, right here. Okay. Does he call him afterwards and tell him or? Uh, I believe so. He calls and tells him, and then. Um, What's he say? It's done. Did he call him or did he text him or? Uh, I know he, he was calling him. I'm not sure which, which one actually got through. I don't, I don't think he texted him. Okay. Because he said he was with his mom eating or hitting the Home Depot or something. Right. What was that prearranged that you're going to meet him there? In other words, like an alibi? Uh -uh. No? That wasn't planned out? It was just... Uh, if, they, if they did, then they did that part, but... You didn't know about that. All you know is that you're going to Home Depot. Okay. So what else is he saying on the ride to, to Home Depot? And what does he say? Just tells John it's done. Is it? Yeah, the, the, the conversation really isn't that much. It's when they um, I guess that they have their conversation in the restroom or okay something because like uh, right after we get there. Um, I started loading up the things and stuff, and then I started looking for a chick, and I bought some pencils, um, and I don't know how long it took them to end up in the restroom, or how long they were in there. Okay. So I think that's when they had a conversation. When did he tell you that she tried to get away, or that he killed her? Was that on the way there, or was that after? That was uh, on, the way, on the way there. Okay, and what's he say then? She got scared, and she actually tried to rub it. Did you say anything else? Mm. So I started laughing about it. Can they say anything else? So it's like, dude, man, she got scared. She tried to run. And he starts laughing. Yeah, he shot her. <laughs> did he say that? He said, I shot her. Yeah. Okay, did he say anything else after that? She dropped, man. She fell. There's blood everywhere. There was anything else. I think he's trying to talk himself up. He's pretty badass. Badass. It's like, I fucked that bitch up, or she's seen her head explode, or. I 
I don't think, yeah, I think he said that. Said what? No, I, no, I ain't gonna say nothing about Say anything else about the shooting? Um. One day he 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 Okay. Did you see her pull up, or was her was her van in the was her van in the driveway when you drove by, or? Uh, yeah, it was, it was there when you got picked up, but it wasn't there when you got dropped off. Okay. And I didn't see a drive up or anything. These are things that I, that I had to believe he got mad about because I wasn't paying attention. So what did he say to you? Did he bitch at you, or? Um, yeah, I think it's it with, with the, what took you so long or something. Okay. But uh, I never saw the man pull up. I never saw him walk out. I just saw him standing in front of, like, I dropped him off in front of the house and he walked towards it. I left, and when I came back, he was just standing right in front of me. Okay, so on the way there, he's bragging about shooting her and how she tried to run. He's laughing about it. You get to Home Depot, and him and John disappear in the bathroom for a while. Okay, do you hear any of that conversation or get anything out of it, or does he tell you what was said? When I got in the restroom, I heard him talking on the phone and him on the phone. Okay. And so you leave there, and does he say anything else about it as you're going to the job site? Something about being slick and... What do you say? Does he say anything else about it when you get to the job site? Is that when he gives you the money, or...? Yeah, he was getting away at the, the Moss Creek. Okay, and, there, and he gave you 10 $100 bills? Yes. Okay. Yes. said don't say anything they don't have anything we're good don't worry about it um john saying that or is john saying hey good job man way to go way to kill my wife does he say anything like that um is he happy uh, yeah a little bit it's kind of it, like yes but no okay and um uh, it's just, uh, just, it's also just saying that we're good, don't say nothing, you know. He's telling John, like, why did you clean up? Um, you have to uh, uh, put on a good show. Okay. And, um, Okay, let me explain something to you real quick, and then we're going to have to, it'll be later today, tomorrow, or maybe even Monday, we're going to have to sit back down and kind of knock this stuff out. 
why I'm asking you about all this stuff. Okay, so you've already told me your story. Is there anything that you've left out? Um, anything significant? Because we got like 30 seconds. Uh, uh, what uh, where we what we uh, gone over in the fact that they, he did do it. Tell us you got paid for it. The job said that he wanted done. Had he had done before the wedding? Um, what the vehicle was? Where he got rid of his weapon? Where he did ditch the shoes? What he was wearing? Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, spice, spice. Oh. Uh, put on a good show. Um, you know, you have to be grieving. Uh, God wanted to go back to work, tell him not to go. Not, you, can't, you just can't go right back to work because of what's going on. Um, like, I, I don't want to mess up this opportunity to help you. Okay, um, well, what we're going to do is either going to be today, tomorrow, or Monday, all right? And we'll get back together and we're going to sit down and have to go through this because I've got to do this now because it's my time frame. Um, well, I was asking you so much about the shoes, so I'll just throw this at you and then you put it in your head and think about, I want you to just think about this. And then we'll come down and we'll boom, 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 and I'll take a good statement from you. Okay, I'm going to tell the DA a little bit, but I'm not going to jump off into it other than to say that you're cooperating, which is the most important thing. Um, so when Jesus tells his story, uh, it's basically the same, except for he says that he drops you off and that you go inside and that you do it and he's the driver. That's why I'm saying self-serving. That's why it's so important that you help yourself out. Self-serving, right? So I know that's not true, but I can't tell you those things up front, right? I can't tell you that because if I tell you that, then I'm putting words in your mouth and I can't do it, right? So I, I can't tell you that, but you, you, but you help yourself out. Because no, you didn't. And then I know that you're not a killer. I know that you're not capable of that. But it's little things like those shoes that are important. Because what's the chance that someone actually has picked up those shoes and that we can find those shoes and prove that it's his DNA, right? So that yeah, I know. Put me some cuff and let's get in the car and I'll take. I, I don't know the street, but I, I can take you that way. So do you think they're still there? The, the, the road has, has no houses around it. Hang on. I don't suppose you guys would want to load him up and go look for some shoes, if that's even a possibility, that were used in the murder. They were tossed off up by Rowlett or by Wiley. Getting that out of there. We're going to yell at Rob Latt and see. Can you just for one second? Yeah. Can you walk me to the restroom? Can I go to the restroom? Again? Uh, I, I don't have a gold bladder and the water just goes like right oh, through okay. me. Okay. Where are you wearing this most of the day? Yeah, so it's got something to do with that. Hey, he's going to take out in about um, a minute. We'll come back. But what uh, I'm going to do is uh, we're going to get with the jail to get you signed out, and I'll probably have Rowlett. If you're cool with them, I'll throw a ranger in with them, one of the younger rangers that you've already met. And you can go out there, and uh, I mean, if you can find the shoes, that would be pretty good. I'm, saying, I'm doing these things to help you, all right? I, and I hope you understand that because when we sit down, I can't sit there and say, hey, this guy said this and this. Now I can tell you a couple things because you've, you've given me your statement and you've said what I know is the truth and I know that you're not the trigger person. But he knows that he's done and he's trying to you know, weasel out of a deal. So he's the one who broaches the deal. You know, He's the one who kind of brings this stuff up because um, he's got some issues. I don't, he was lying about being Los Miserales or some stupid stuff. and He's just a punk. That is all he is, but, uh, you know... But he's throwing the stuff out there. So, I mean, it's not believable. I know that. The bad thing is, is imagine if he would have just not said anything. Oh, I have a statement from him. I'm a, you know, I got all this corroboration. I got all this other stuff. Uh, you know, just imagine that. And who can say who went in and shot? You or him, right? 
Isn't that right? John can't really say, can he? I mean, John knows who's supposed to shoot, but he can't say who the shooter is. And that's the importance. That's the significance of all this, of why everything has to be truthful and honest. And you have to remember as much as there is to put this together, because that's to prove you up, man. Right? you got to take care of number one. Uh, and, you know, he's looking for a deal. You know, he's a duck penalty guy. Right? That's what he's looking at. And he's, he's looking for, man, I'm going to cut me a deal. Honestly, I don't want him to get a deal. You know, I don't want anything. He's a shooter. I know that. But he's trying to play this thing off on you. And if you just shut up and act like, you know, I don't know nothing, I don't know nothing, then that's fine. But then justice doesn't really get carried out, does it? Because you're a stooge in this. I mean, for the most part, I mean, you knew it was going down, right? You, I mean, you're not an idiot. You got paid a thousand bucks, but... I thought it was all bullshit. I, I, I'm being honest. I thought it was just bullshit in the beginning. But it should happen, right? And, and so you know that he he uh, killed her, but, you know, you caught up in it. So now it's about, you know, you being honest and you being truthful and you helping yourself out. And again, I don't make promises. I'm not the DA. I'm none of those people. Um, but it's important that, that your story's out there because, I mean, imagine if you just sit there and shut up. Then what happens? All right, we got one guy who's cooperating, and he says how the whole thing goes down and everything matches up except for the fact that he was driving and you went in. Right? Well, what can corroborate the fact that it was him, those shoes with his DNA on it and blood? I'll stick my toes in the restroom. It's, it's been raining, damn it. Well, but you'd be amazed at what forensics can do nowadays. Uh, I just solved a case from 1997 for serial murder deal. So, um, you know, cross your fingers. But if anything, it corroborates, right? It corroborates that, that he's the one who tosses it. Your shoes aren't sitting on the side of the road, right? Well, I mean, doesn't that, well, why the hell does he throw out his shoes? So, but that's why it's so important that you're 10,000% honest, that you don't lie about anything, that you're completely truthful, because, uh, you know, you got a guy who's trying to pin you as a trigger man, right? I mean, and does that surprise you? I mean, <laughs> hello, I wake up. Notice my face when you say, well, you know, but, but does it really surprise you, though? Come on, you know this dude. He's a knucklehead. He's a wannabe. Oh, one week he's Los Zetas, and the next week he's Los Miserables, and then he's a, uh, you know, you name it, he's there. Uh, you don't go run around telling people you're a Zeta, you know? You don't tell people that you're Mexican Mafia when you're not. And tell people you're working for the uh, Los Mezicales, you know, enforcement arm of the golf cartel, and you don't. Those are mistakes that you don't make. So he's in a bind right now because he's a moron. Uh, he's out, You saw how stupid he is. He throws all these things out there in advance. He, he's trying to get, you know, three different guys to work on it, right? Picture of the gun. Is that the gun? Okay. <laughs> so, but, I, I mean, he's a moron. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I sure would have hated this morning for you not to make the right choice, you know. But I can't, I can't say that up front, right? I mean, I can't tell you what someone else, what the statement they gave. So, but it's, you know, it's about you, man. And sometimes people get caught up in stupid shit, and this is stupid shit, but at the end of the day, you didn't stick a gat to her head and blow her brains out, right? Right? I'm still going to get into some shit. Well, hey, you know what? There's a storm in the military, right? Special ops shit. You're out in the desert and some shit's going down and this sandstorm comes up around you. And you're driving through it. What do you do when this sandstorm comes up all around you? You go for the eye. What do you do? Do you turn left? Do you turn right? Do you go straight? Do you back up? You go straight through it because the shortest route out is going right through the middle of it. Because if you turn left, it might be moving to the left. If you turn right, it might be moving to the right. It's coming at you and you're going in it. You go through it. And you know what? In the middle of that storm, it is bad. You know what? You might be in a bad spot. You know, you storms all over the place. But guess what? As you keep driving and you keep focused and light starts coming out. And all of a sudden you start seeing sunlight because you drove through it and you get out of that storm. Right? You're getting out of that storm. Okay? You're doing the right thing. But, um, you know, you, I need you to think about it. I need you to go back and remember anything and everything you can. I need you to take them to those shoes. 
All right? I need you to do all these things for you. This isn't about the case. They're done, you know. But this is about saving you, okay? Look at me. I believe you, all right? I don't, you think I believe that son of a bitch for a second? No, oh, come on. I believe you, all right? You need to help me out because I'm, I'm trying to clear you, right? You got a role in it, but your role is like this big. You got this son of a bitch who's married to her and plans it, and you got the guy who's cold-blooded and does it, right? So now we need to help you. Okay, but you got to help you think about anything you can think about anything you forgot about. Try to remember every single thing as as small as the detail is. Get us those shoes. Think about that gun. Are you telling the truth about the gun? You gotta tell the truth if you want me to help you. I know uh, that the cameras at that damn uh, mini mark shows where, where the gun was exposed, but it just shows. You sure I mean, that, that that's where the thing. gun went? Yeah. Okay. The gun what about the at the job site where the trash had been picked up by now? But they have a big dumpster that just sits there oh, forever. It was the regular okay. city. Well, I want you to take them to the gas station too. All right. Sometimes those videos are stored on the cloud. We can get that. All right. Are you going to keep me like this? I don't know what they're going to do, man. That's um, uh, They're going to have to sign you out and do all kinds of stuff. i got other shit going right now. All right? But it's about you helping you, okay? But look at me. you got to stay positive, stay in there, and it's time to help yourself out. All right? But anything you think of, the conversation, planning, anything, anyone else who's around who can corroborate the statements, and anything Rosalinda knows, anything about the car. I want you to take them where the car got rid of. All right? Okay. You take them to where the shoes are, you take them to the gas station where the gun was dumped, and you take them to where the car was lost. All right? Where he got rid of the car. Can you do all that? The car, the, 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 do you know where he bought the car? Can you go to that place too? It was, it was a, a guy, uh, a black dude. Uh, we, we, we just, we met him off of Craigslist or some shit. I think it was Craigslist or some other app that they were looking at. Okay. Those are the things that corroborate your statement. Um, okay? And that's what we need to do. But I, I got a rock, all right? I hate time constraints, and I hate having to run out here, but I got to go grab this dude, okay? Because it's a big publicity deal, and if the media gets a hold of it before uh, he's in cuffs, then there's going to be issues. Okay? I'm also, uh, I'm trying to think of thing, because, um, shoes, gun, the, the car place, uh, it's, to his uh, stepdad's mechanic shop. Okay. I want you to take him to it. All right. And he'll be probably arranging some of the Rowlett guys. Are you cool with the Rowlett guys? They're, they're pretty good dudes. Right? Yeah, but they're going to be moving. Okay. Hey, if you don't want to talk to anyone, you don't have to talk to them, just tell them where to go. Okay? If you want to wait and talk to me later, that's fine. If you want to talk to Rowlett, then that's fine too. All right? I want to make you comfortable. But, I mean, at this point... You don't want to make anyone mad at you. you. I mean, these people are trying to help you. They're trying to do the same thing I am. So we all need to kind of work together as a team, right? You're part of the team, man. There's no I in team. But we all need to work together, right? And let's, man, let's get these son of bitches, you know? You should be mad. I will be mad, right? I am upset, but I'm hurt. But I'm your salvation sitting right here today because I know that he's full of shit. I know that he's trying to weasel out of something, all right? And I know that he's a trigger man, but I need you to help me corroborate all that, okay? Because I want to go to the DA, boom, 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 right? I know this because of this, and this was corroborated, and this was corroborated. He took us to the gas station, that's corroborated. He took us to shoes, that's corroborated. He took us to where the vehicle was uh, sold, that's corroborated. You know, all those things, I want you to do that for me, okay? And then I want to come back, and I want to get a really good statement from you, and I want you to sit there and think about it. Your memory is amazing. I just shook it up. Right? You're going to go to bed tonight, and tomorrow morning or two days from now, well, you won't sleep tonight, but two days from now, you're going to have some crazy sleep because you're going to be so exhausted and mentally drained, and you're going to go into a REM cycle, REM, rapid eye movement, and you're going to just sleep really good and sound. And when that happens, your memory comes back. And you start, re I, I shook up your hard drive, right? And now all these things are going to start coming forward, and you're going to remember things. The... The picture, uh, the the cameras in Rolette, the traffic cams. Okay. Do they work? 
Yeah. You take them on the road. Take them on the road. You drove. I mean, I think they got most of it, but they were looking for the wrong car, I think. So if they see me driving, I'm in a parachute. Then you should probably tell Rowlett the exact route. Because Rowlett was looking for a Cadillac. A black thing. Yep. You know, those traffics, you got to sit there and you got to zoom in into shit. But if you find that car and we have the plate, then those cameras, you can run uh, plate cams because they take a picture of every plate as it goes through. Right? As opposed to looking to a gray car, no, they do. I'm telling you, they do. But as opposed to looking to, for a gray car, that they can, a gray car with this plate, then they can probably find it. And those things are saved for a long time. Right, so yeah, it, uh, yeah, and the original. Okay, so you gotta you gotta help Rowlett. You gotta help that that young ranger. You gotta help them, all right, because it helps you. And right now, everyone's on the same team, all right. Sound good? Will you hang in there for me? Yeah, but I, I just know that's going to they're still going to look at me, man. Yeah. Well, if you're not comfortable talking to me, then then you don't have to. But point out these things and tell them, okay? Because I can't do that right now, and that's the shit that we need to get done, all right. I'll have the ranger go with them too, okay? But it's, I mean, we all gotta, we gotta work together, right? Okay, if you're not comfortable talking to someone, that's fine, I'm, I'm, but at least point it out to them, okay? I'm, I'm gonna prove myself. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, hey, brother, I'm working the same angle, okay? But we can corroborate a couple of these things, and that's what's important about all your statement and the little, it's the little things, it's the little things that are important. The shoes, the shoes are important. Where the gun was dumped was important. He's saying different shit, you know? So, let's prove this thing up. The gun has his prints on it. Yeah, buddy. The shoes have his DNA. Yep, and the victim's blood. And the gun will have the victim's blood on it, too. Because it's from here to here, right? Blood comes back. It'll be in the barrel. You won't be able to see it, but... Uh, he was standing that close? Yep. Y'all need to get your ass out there and find those shoes, all right? Um, I, I hate to be a nuisance and say this, sir. Yeah. What time is it? 2.30. Hungry. <laughs> I'll tell them to get you some food, okay? All right, they're going to bring you back and hold it, and then those other guys will be here in a little bit, and they'll start uh, rocking and rolling. Help or? I don't know. I'll find out where they're going to take you. Yeah, I know he was asking if there's any way to get any food. Hey, yeah, yeah, all right, all right, I'll help you out. Oh, okay, cool, 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 sorry. Right. Hey, come on, Jeff. Hey, your food, I talk to the jail, talk to the supervisor, they're going to give you two trays. Okay. okay. In what police initially thought was a burglary gone wrong, things started to come together. When detectives learned that Jesus Trevino was already a convicted SO and a felon that was here illegally, they put out a warrant for his arrest but Jesus was nowhere to be found. They tracked down an ex-girlfriend of his in Denver, Colorado, and what she told detectives changed the course of this case. When questioned, she said that Jesus told her that his boss hired him to kill his wife for $15,000 months before the murder took place. In fact, Trevino had told several people about this. Jesus was not a smart criminal by any stretch of the imagination. James Vieda, the driver during the murder, testified against both Macris and Trevino in exchange for a 25-year plea deal. In the end, John Macris would receive life in prison with no possibility of parole for hiring Jesus and James to kill his wife, Laura Grillo. Why he did it is all up to speculation. I won't get into that because I just don't know. Is there ever a good reason to kill or have someone killed? I would say rarely. In February of 2019, it took jurors less than 45 minutes to come to a verdict in the capital murder trial of Jesus Trevino he would be found guilty and also receive a life sentence with no possibility of parole. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more on this case.